This is the D6 Generation. Dice are our vice. Creating not too horrible content since 2008. Are you crazy? That's like 400 hours of gamer nonsense. Oh, I think we're well past that. This episode, more Dungeons and Dragons live play. The Sands of Kassad. All right, welcome back to the Sands of Kassan, gentlemen. Um, I will start with this recap here to get us back to where we were. Um, so the, it is late morning on the 21st of flock time in the 157th year of Emperor Edix's reign. After finishing off the last snow drake with little to no trouble, the dragon hunters moved further into Tezem Podris's lair. The ice coating the earthen walls acted as, a mul- as multifaceted mirrors making it difficult to approach unnoticed and confusing to navigate. Well, actually, it was mostly just confusing for Aurelius, but everyone managed to find their way into a massive open cavern with an ice rink for a floor. It wasn't long after they entered that the ice worm confronted our heroes, and an epic battle ensued during which Namfoodle managed to spy a rune circle carved into one of the stone walls. Blood now covers much of the once pristine floor as well as most of the combatants. It was a hard-won battle. But in the end, it is the mighty Tozem Podris whose form lays motionless. To our victors go the spoils. How will they retrieve the embedded horde while dealing with the bitter cold that constantly gnaws at them? And what's with a way window in a dragon's lair? It's time to find out. All right. So here we are. We are in this ice cave. Um, again, um, there, the uh, daylight is still going. It has an hour on it. Um, I, re- I got rid of the larger marker that was cool effect. Um, but was kind of taken up for a movement. And I've just got the one that's but it's producing the light. So you guys should be able to see correctly. Um, there is a lot of bloodied individuals. There is a dead dragon. There, you got the light There's is There's a sparkling. lovely book right there. A lovely book? On, on, Nam's making on, on Ross's screen. Oh, oh Nam's yeah. making notes in his notebook. He's looking at these runes on this big circle. And he's like, yeah, making some notes. If there's a little people green paint, yeah. Patreon's watching this will be able to view Nam's book, but that's not important to us. But thanks for bringing it oh, up. Oh, it is to me. It's very important. <laughs> Actually, John, that's a good segue. Uh, Nam realizes that this portal is important, but he also knows that he's got some serious organ harvesting to do while the time is right, because he knows the reason for being here is to gather the essence of the dragon and other elements so we can... Yeah, we are, we are actually at the top of the round. I am going to... Um, there is about three more rounds left on a couple of different spells that are up. So I'm just going to go through um, uh, those three rounds and then we'll come out of rounds. So um, Cal, what are you doing? Again, the floor, it's hard to not notice the floor is literally, the ice floor is literally sparkling with coins embedded all over the place because of the daylight um, that is was generated by um, Azrael. And so that's just sparkling off everywhere, making like little star patterns on the, on the walls, um, the ceilings, real, a little tough to see. Oh, actually, with the daylight, you can see the ceiling, too. So it's got the star patterns. Are, it's like a little disco action going on in here. Um, so, Cal, what are you planning on doing for the next couple of rounds? So the next 12 well, or so seconds, roughly. When last I was moved, when last I went, I, I was kind of lost being uh, being misled by the various. That is true. Um, so there is still a potential issue with that. If you wanted to go back into the main cavern, that's pretty yeah. obvious. But if you're trying to go south or north, that's where it could be a little confusing. Right now, you think south is north. So I'm going to sniff around and see if I can figure out which way I'm going. And uh, and then I was going to go back the direction I was going to go before where the dragon was. Because I don't know. Yeah, sniffing doesn't help so down. much because it's you can actually, because um, you'll think you're going in the direction that you're sniffing. So basically, just roll me. Unless you're go, If you're trying to find, um, if you're trying to either go south or north, roll me a percentile die. And that'll you'll think you're going the right way. If you're trying to go back into the middle of the cavern, you can do that with no problem. So that is a one. You, if you were planning on going north, you move that distance south, headed down to the bottom. That's bottom. a one. <laughs> yeah, that's a one. So, so just move your guy down the direct because you now you you see it, everything tells you you can smell um, drill nice, and you you think that by fo- going that way, you're going in the direction that you smell him. So just move your guy down there. Drell always smells nice. Yeah, right. <laughs> you can also smell the dead dragon, so that's part of it too. 
But um, so does his smell his smell reflex too? <laughs> uh, well, it's not. That's not the problem. The problem is, is yeah. your brain tells you you're going in the direction that you're you're smelling him because uh, you're looking oh, okay. at the so mirror. It's, it's not just the reflection. It's the well, it is the reflection. The reflection tell you, but you think you're going towards him in that you think you're going north right now, which is where the smell is. So it's just it's weird that the way it's set up. So um, okay. just gonna have well, to there trust I am. me. But Even more lost. so you as you get to this point, you're starting to realize that you have two choices, which you shouldn't have. So um, the problem is you can try to turn around, um, but it is awful confusing. So give me a second round. We're just going to two rounds at a time to get out of rounds here. So um, give give me another percentile roll. So, you know, you know, you're in the going the wrong direction. So now okay. you can go back and you can dash in the right direction if you want to. <laughs> so just do your full movement going, because this is not difficult terrain outside of the log here. So if you want to head towards Drell and the Dragon, just move your full, like, 90, I think it is. Okay, and I think that's probably about, just rough guess, I'm going to say that's probably about there. Yeah, that sounds good. All right, you so, you're measure, two, yeah. so Nam, give me a couple rounds, 12 seconds worth of stuff you're doing. So as I mentioned, Nam's going to put his book away. Uh, he's going to come back to studying this uh, interesting rune circle. But first... Uh, he knows that he needs to find the um, the dragon. We need to gut that dragon, get into its stomach, and find the white dragon Bezor in its stomach that I've been told looks kind of like an ice sphere. So, well, well, let me throw up. Uh, uh, throw not not physically well, throw. Let me throw, throw it up. That's great. Did he throw yeah, it? Let up? me. That makes it a lot easier. No, let me throw up a picture of it, um, which is kind of funny because you could throw it up. This um, is what happens when a non arcane arcane caster tries to go into a dragon's belly. I'm going to show. I'm showing this to the um, the players again. So is. basically, this it's it, what your what the the image that Indrizzle showed you is like this glowing. It almost looks like a crystal, but it looks like or an ice formation. But it has like this energy around it, um, and it's about that size of a softball. Um, um, it, you know, maybe a little bit bigger than that, but roughly the size of of a softball. Um, so that's what you're looking for, and it's supposed to be found in his stomach, like a bezoar. Correct. Um, so yeah, give yourself find... do do two rounds worth of movement, Russ, with right. Nam. Uh, so where did I hear the noise coming from as the dragon was slain? Well, you know that yeah, you know the dragon died over here, and there's a cave entrance out this way. I'm going to head that way. Um, okay. The you are on difficult terrain, remember, but you can dash, so you can do two two rounds of uh, 15, 15, your full movement. 20, 25. So that's me dashing over difficult terrain. Am I once over... you get once you get past this ice pool here, it will be non difficult terrain. So. 15, 20, 25. So that's two rounds dashing yep. on difficult terrain. All right, Azra, what are you going to do for two rounds? All right. Um, I can get to where Namfoodle is in 55 feet. So I'm going to get to him. I can get here in 60. Uh, does that put me in the place where I need to use the percentile die? Um, the This is, the, because the one choice is the big room, you don't have to use percentile dice. Awesome. It's right, easy. Uh, the the mirrors kind of stop at the edge. The mirrors are tough when you're going around the outside and when you in the cave when you entered from where the snow drakes were, but they're not so bad when you're dealing with a choice between the main cavern and the and a side a side part of the cavern. So you're headed off now to the um the west, up to the, the northwest um corridor, yeah. passing the ice pool. And the dragon, you know, is you can is where he died over there somewhere. You heard yeah. um you specifically heard Drell uh, um, spit on the dead dragon after yeah, he slayed Bloody so. loogie, if I remember. remember um, Aurelius, what are you doing for two rounds? So uh, I can make it here in one round right here. And I'm going to look at these. Uh, I'm going to observe this circle that was noticed. And see okay. if there's... Uh, Give me a... Because um, you can get over there with regular movement or with a dash with your haste. Uh, it's going to be a haste and a dash for one round, and I have a second round. Exist. Okay, you can give me a bonus um, arcana check for a rough idea, um, but you'll have to take a full action investigating to get real knowledge. But you can get a you can get a decent idea. Um, what languages do you speak, by the by? Uh, I don't speak the language you want me to speak, which mm -hmm. is. Oh, I also need I also need a perception check from you. So Elvish, Sylvan, and a um, and common. Okay. Give me a perception check to see if you can even find the runes. Uh, um, all right, you can see them because because the, the situation is this is all like cracked rock surface, and you can actually see the um, there's a ledge up here, thirty feet up, 
Mm -hmm. that looks like it levels off. So there looks like there's a, like a ledge that goes all the way along from like here along this thing. And so there looks like there's a shelf up there. Um, so that with your perception, you can figure that part out pretty well too. And this is on the face of the, of the wall that goes up to the shelf, to the ledge. And it's, it does, it's not obvious runes that are there, but they're actually um, cracks in the surface. But with that perception, you can figure out those cracks actually form runes. You don't know that language. And with, with 11 Arcana, you're, um, you agree it's some sort of way thing, only because Nam mentioned it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you're like, yeah, that yeah about that's, being a, that's a way thing. Person? So yeah, the, that's not a very good, not good, but you can do a further investigation or Arcana check with a full action. That's kind of just your passive, we'll call it Arcana. Um, which is technically higher than that role, yeah, but I mean, that's just a quick more information role. about how ways work at the Golden Camel. You have a, another round though, so if you want to do a full, more deep dive, yeah, why not? Okay, so give me an Arcana check, um, deep dive, and roll better. <laughs> um, all right, yeah, you the, with the time, I look at the notebook, are, that's how it's done. You're a hundred percent sure that Nam was correct, and this is a and you <laughs> oh, you, you agree, up, you did you? Yeah, you you agree with the assessment. This is not a way portal, which allows you to pass from one plane to another. Um, this is a way window, and a, with that role, with the exception, a way window allows divination through it. It allows to speak to somebody on the other side, and it allows energies to pass through it that are. Um, particular to the um planes involved or the runes that that connect from the prime from your plane to whatever plane is involved um or whatever realm is involved so in my world realm is the layman's term for plane so you will hear me use those interchangeably um so the the average person refers to other spaces outside of your realm as realms other realms and but the educated are you know um scholar and the one who knows the ways refer understands that those are actual planes of existence. Um, so, if you at, unlike, you remember the so you guys dealt with a um, a way portal um, that you needed a key on both sides to operate to open. Um, this that one particularly went to the abyss that you shut down because um, you got both both keys and closed it off. Yes, the way window doesn't require a key on either side. Either side can open it. And um, and and communicate through it or view through it, but again, nobody can pass through it. Um, yeah. So it's an interesting thing to find in a dragon's gate. So it's a way to talk to somebody. It's basically like a sending stone. Yeah, it's a way to communicate. Um, you could also like it's you could open it and divine. Like you could open it and into the plane that it's connected to and look for somebody too by using divination spells, like scrying through it, um, or you know sending like some sort of divination, like an arcane eye would pass through it. Um, so those kinds of things are also can be used through it. Um, and so that's what you learn with that. So we're back to, now we're down to Drell at the end of the round. Drell, what are you going to do for a couple of rounds? Uh, Drell is going to limp painfully in this direction here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, look, more bloody friends. And, yeah, like uh, every everybody is everybody's bloodied except for Aurelius. I've got turns three out hit it turns points. out yeah, it turns out that Aurelius's uh indecision to split up with the party just by accident worked out well for him. So I got you, Drell. I got you. All right, you. so you guys so Nam right and there. As Nam and As, you hear him first, especially As, um, because he's got insane celestial uh passive perception. Um he you guys hear, I mean, and Nam, you hear him too, because he's not being that quiet. He's probably like, well, he wouldn't do that because he wouldn't drag his axe, but he's dragging his body. He's got one hand kind of leaning against the wall, leaving bloody handprints as he comes yeah. around on the mirror. Um, he's covered in blood. Most of it is, um, well, actually, it's about probably about half and half just because dragon. I would say so most of it is mine, to be honest. A lot of it. Yeah, you you and you engaged the dragon mostly covered in your own blood. But yeah. you did open up a giant head wound that spilled all over you from the dragon. Yeah, so that's and they, that's a lot of blood. Um, so you are just covered in blood um, and and uh, you come walking around the corner. Um, what are you going to do with your second part of the round? Or is that two for you already? Uh, no, that was just one. I, okay. I dashed. That was me dashing. 
I'm gonna go over here and see what these guys are doing. They seem to be headed. They seem to be headed towards you in your direction. They're actually oh, well. On the in move. that case, I'm just gonna rest up against this brick, this this mirrored wall. And I'm thinking as I smear myself along the mirrored wall that it might be easier to navigate if we just smear my blood along all of the mirrors so that they're more obscured. Well, the the other side of it, you do get a very good view of how badly beaten up as you lean against this mirror and see your reflection in a thousand other mirrors. Yes, um, and yet I am still a paragon of manhood. <laughs> All right, so we're going to come out of rounds. There's basically six seconds left on your dance, um, Aurelius, and, and six seconds left on your haste. So we'll come out of rounds. I'm going to close down this counter for now. Um, and um, we'll, you guys, we'll just, I'll go... Actually, let me open that back up just as a, just to have a list. We'll go through, um, and you guys can tell me what you're doing in um, larger time frames. So, Cal, what's your intent? Um, or you guys can have a discussion. I don't know what your plans are. But what's your intent for the next, you know, several mi- 10, 15 minutes? What's your what's your what are you what are your objectives for you know? Uh, to catch up with the group, but also to kind of explore around as I go. Okay. So you. So you're going to explore this place. So if you want, while I, well, I'm t- finding out what the others are doing, you can actually move your miniature around and explore okay. the rest of this cavern if you want. Um, you can also, you're flying, so feel free to go anywhere that your miniature is allowed to go. Um, and while I discuss with these guys, um, so you can see the whole cavern. And you'll be doing that for next few, you know, several minutes. Um, Nam, you can go ahead. You're, I assume you want to get to Nam and Az. If you both, and I'm going to start harvesting for this. Uh, Nam, and Az, is your intent? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dev. What? Uh, I, I'm pretty solid. I have a I'm pretty decent survival. I don't know what your skill is. I can assist you. I'm going to help. I want to get my scales. Survival is mediocre. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty wise. I, that's something I do. Lead? I'll, I'll assist. I'll be like your. Alrighty. Assistant. As, as I pass by Drell. Uh, I will lay my hand on his side and say, you fought in her glory today, brother. And I will give you eight hit points back. Give me what? Lay on hands. Uh, eight hit points. Woo! Double digits! <laughs> Just in case it gets too cold. Uh, um, so, so, I'll go, so go ahead and move. As a Nam, go ahead and move yourselves around the corner there. You'll see the dragon. So you'll be working on the dragon. Actually, this is your second dragon kill, which by definition makes you dragon slayers. Yes. Um, and a and this dragon is actually and the, comma. Uh, go ahead, Russ. Dragons, dragon binder, and dragon slayer. I've bound two dragons, and I've been involved in slaying two dragons. That that did happen, and this is actually as a second um, dragon that he is uh, going to see if he can. Uh, Gain, you know, getting scales off of or any other items. I off was of them. gonna say, would I be able to incorporate it into my current set of armor? I know I can uh, get no, but immunity. you could create that a deals. second item, perhaps. I was gonna say that, or I could get a white set, which is more common because ice is way more common and than more acid. Common. Yes, true. Yes. So yes. his previous, the previous armor that uh, As is wearing is, and they killed the black, the dark one, who was a black dragon, and he has a set of black dragon half plate. Um, all, right, um, all right. So you two are working on that. Uh, Aurelius, what are you going to be doing for the next handful of minutes? Now, remember, you have probably um, you're this once you engage the snow drakes and then the dragon, literally, um, it was only a couple of minutes, believe it or not, actually probably closer to two and a half minutes. But um, you so you still have a decent amount of time on your resist energies. Um, so. You're, you still have, you know, close to an hour. So it's going to take you a while to harvest the um, this dragon, depending on how much you want. So you have to decide how much, oh, you want the Bezoid, which that will take a while to get to, because you're going to have to open yeah. up some scales. Yeah, so that's going to take... We're, we're, that, we're digging for Bezoid, baby. And it there will also depend orbits. on your goals. So there I'm sorry, Aurelius, what are you going to do? Oh, um, uh, I do remind him there are two orifices to get through the dragon if you need to, to get in. Um, one, one, one you can explore one, one of them for the priest. The um, I ask Cal uh, to uh, go up uh, and explore this shelf area and see what he can see. I'm up there, and then once I ask Cal to do that, I'm going to spend the next ten minutes doing a ritual casting of detect magic, and then I'm going to walk around the area and see if there's any magic 
in the area. There's there's my next 10, 15 minutes right there. Okay. Um, so Cal, everybody yeah. else is kind of involved in stuff except for Drell, who's just holding up the wall and himself, or the wall yep. is holding him up. So Cal, if you want to move, um, I'll move you over here. So if if you're okay with that flying up there and checking yep. it out, because that's what Aurelius asked. Yep. Okay. So up there, give me a perception check. Very good. So there is um there's some rocks um that are covered by snow um where it looks like um uh Tizem clumsily tried to hide some items most there's a few coins up here so you can pick those up while you're at it most of the coins seem to be embedded in the ice but there is a um there is a vial that has a clear liquid um Hello? Okay, so there's a clear liquid that floats. I was just pausing to read this. I apologize. I w- so at the top of the vial is a uh, a clear like bubble floating in a cloudy white uh, cloudy liquid with white impurities, just like drifting through it. But the top of it is like clear, almost like they're separated. Um, and then the o- the other thing up there is a um, is a uh, heavy tome that is leather bound. Um, mm-hmm but it has gold like filigree on it. Um, it has this silver symbol, almost looks like a throwing star, but in, in the center of the throwing star is a, um, what appears to be a, a red gem of some type, perhaps a ruby. And then there's two, there's four blue gems on each corner set into the gold um, that's um, adhered to the leather. And it almost seems like the center of the leather. It has like a scale texture to it, but um it doesn't necessarily have to come from a scale animal. It might've just been leather that was pressed to look that way. And, um, but it is pretty thick. It's a good uh, four inches thick and heavy. Um, and the size, I'd say, you know, the size of a, a regular uh, three ring binder, but it's just full and heavy. Um, and so those are really the only two items that are up there. Um, there's some leftover, uh, you see some leftover pieces of what appear to be dwarven armor. That might have been burped up, um, and they still have some crusty bile on them, like blue bile type substance on them. And then there's some bones that um, you could do a check if you want, but a variety of humanoid bones up there. Um, and uh, but the armor pieces don't seem to be of uh, anything of super value. Some ch- ch- chain links that might have belonged to armor, like patchwork pieces of that, and um, and other bones. Yeah. <clears throat> So just write those two items down, and then once um, you get a chance to do a long rest or um, identify, you can figure out what they are or okay. aren't. I collect those items. I put them in my bag of holding for now. All right. So get a, go ahead. Well, if for your first 10 minutes, um, go ahead, Nam slash Azrael combo on harvesting this dragon. Let's see what we do for rolls. Well, is it individual? So it's all Devin. Or go is Devin. it just advantage? Okay. Am I cool with taking So it has advantage because this... Nam's helping you. Yeah, Nam's so annoyingly I mean, helping you. He's like, point, oh, go there. Like, do that. You know, Nam. But it's, but it's so, good annoying. It's the good kind. It's the perfect kind. It's the wow, perfect it kind. Was the, it was the yeah, perfect it kind. Is. That's how gnomes. Help. So you can pretty much get whatever you want out of this and can fit into one of your bags of holding or carry. Um, the first thing, though, so you have to remove some scales. You watch Nam as, as Al, as Azrael, looks like he's done this once, at least before, expertly finds this section in the. Uh, as the, the beast kind of laid flopped over with his head to his side and his claws splayed out. And so he goes up to its chest and works his way down. You guys struggle a little bit to move one of the legs out of the way, but you find a good place where his belly might be or between his back leg. And Nam, uh, Azrael goes in there um, using a sharp instrument, which I'm sure he can either get from you or he has a dagger at least, um, or a hunting knife if he's a survivalist. So he works past the, um, the scales and gets into its stomach and um, assuming he doesn't have a problem with it, you can stop me if you do, as, but he just reaches into this gory area, comes out just covered, and there's a little bit of bite, but you have a really good dragon armor, and it's acid protection, so the acid in this dragon stomach is not affecting you whatsoever, your gauntlets, and he comes out with the, with the, uh, with the ice spirit or the bazor, 
and it's like his fist is just barely holding on. It's a little bit bigger than a softball, um, and it has this glowing energy around it, crackling around it. Not lightning energy, but some sort of cold, like shifting and going around it. Um, so he has that, um, and um, you can then harvest anything you want. Um, Russ has a really good chart that I referenced too. Um, that there, but a lot of the items on a dragon spoil. But you are going back today, so um, you can just tell me um, what you want to spend time on. If, if like there's tongues, there's glands, there's um, there's talons, there's teeth. Um, All right, I can so, I can throw but that. In a lot the of that's good. it's going to take a considerable it. amount of time to get. Yeah, like if I you can, want a lot of scales, it's going to take a long time to get scales. I, so. I okay, I'm just gonna because how real, I can hold I can hold the bezoar in my little uh, quiver thing. Yeah, I, I'll pass it off to you. I so you give the bezoar. So you have before. you have the key item mm -hmm. to make the snow fury cloak in your in your and Nam, Nam has to use both hands to hold it because he's small. Yeah, um, my little my little quiver. Um, so you can put that in wherever you'd like. And it, there, and I'll help sure. you with any additional harvesting you need because you were kind enough to get this for me. So if you need any assistance, I'll be happy to continue. Yeah, I just, my goal is to harvest enough scales. I don't know about weight. And I know the bag of holding has a weight restriction. Yeah, well, it can uh, only hold 500 pounds. Um, I, do you yeah. have a bag of holding yourself? I do not. And I don't know what everybody else's bag of holding is looking like. Yeah. So. But you can have, like, you can have a regular sack and get a decent amount of scales, enough to okay. make one suit of armor. I was going to say, yeah, want... if I could get enough to get two, just so I could sell it off to make money, because that okay. would be huge. Um, you, but... Yeah, um, but amongst the group, I'm not going to harp, but amongst the group, you can get your hands on another sack or another. So if okay. you want to, but that's going to literally do, roll me, um, roll me a percentile die. Percentile die? Sure thing. So it's going to take you to get one suit of armor's worth of stuff without breaking. It's going to, I'm adding 30 minutes to that. So it's going to take you just over an hour to get one suit's worth of scale. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you want to roll a second percentile, you can know how much it's going to get take to get the second set. Yeah. So could I roll it knowing how much it would take to get the second set and choose not to? Or is this, I would yeah, yeah, do it. Yeah, that's but, fine. Okay. You can just tell how tough it is. You can figure it out. Oh, okay. You've done it before. So another, so basically it's going to take you two hours almost okay. exactly to get two um, sets of I, one hour I can each. do is, yeah. Um, I'll do the and Nam's, Actually, Nam's and helping then... you. So that time is if, if Nam, Nam roll advantage with heart with a, for a, a survival check. Cause, cause uh, check as advantage coming up. Yeah. As has shown you exactly how to do it. So that's why you have advantage. I got you boo. All right. So nice. you, um, so you can you can cut that. So in the in the in an hour, the two of you can get enough armor to make um, a medium sized um, two medium sized suits or like a or shield. One small suit. Just yes, you can make a small suit too. But yeah, if yeah. you want. So you have enough. You have enough for two suits. Anyway. So somebody yeah. write that down amongst the two of you. Um, uh, I can write down. Devin, you you record all the harvesting, and we can sort of. Yeah, yeah. I'll write I'll write down all the stuff. It's two suits worth of half. So uh, uh, so that so you guys are tied up for for an hour. So let's move back to um, it. So it's taking uh, Aurelius ten minutes. So that means our potions are wearing off, right, John? But our they will they will wear off at the end of this. Yes. Okay. Um, and so Drell, what it, it's you can hear them working. They're going to be Cal, and I need to know Cal and Drell. But let's start with Drell because Cal's already flown up there. Drell, are you just going to rest for an hour? That'd be a, you could actually get a short rest in if you do that. Yeah, I'm going to assume the position of my my the the first position of my um uh, of my um ritual ritual and just sort of with my axe in my hands and kind of focus if uh uh if if the go moon goddess like wants me to go in a particular direction I'm assuming my axe will kind of tug me there otherwise I'm just going to settle in all right, so you settle in up, um, sitting on the floor, have whatever style you prefer, but you're down on the floor resting. Because And so Nam, just so you know, Nam and as you are not getting a short rest in because this is oh. hard work. Um, yeah. and dragon. All right, Cal, what would you, you didn't take you very long to find those. Do you want to just continue exploring or would you like yeah, to? Yeah, I'm just going to continue to look all around the cavern. Okay, so you know, if, if you're, if anything you're that's flying, really, really worthwhile. If you're flying around and exerting yourself, you will not be getting a short rest in just if you know, just so you know. Okay. Okay. So um, you can continue to move yourself around on down your time. Um, if you at any point decide to stop, 
while I'm just uh, while I'm talking with Aurelius because he's going to be taking steps through his time of an hour. Um, mm-hmm. Let me know. Um, all right. Have, so have Aurelius, I, uh, have, oh, go ahead. oh, I'm sorry. Have I? No, nope, nope, Go ahead. Do I need to do a perception check or anything? See if I find anything else or. Um, you can give, the, I'll let you keep the perception check. You got a really good perception check. Um, okay. I'll let you do like a three round type of perception check again. And you're okay. literally the, the, that just seems to be all there is. You can see with that perception sec, check, you see these, um, runes that everybody's talking about where Aurelius is working in the wall at one point when you're flying around, what languages yeah. do you, what languages do you speak, Cal? Uh, I speak common and I think the Sylvan there, the elf. Yeah, so you don't recognize you don't recognize those runes at all. Um, yeah. All right, so you're continuing to search. So ten minutes goes by, and so if you are you still searching after ten minutes? Uh, yep. Okay. So Aurelius, uh, your ten minutes have gone on your casting. So then I'm going to walk around the room. I'm going to ask Cal if he found anything to show me. I can see if it's magic. As I say, I'm going to tell Drell and anybody else. I'm going to just circulate around the room which shouldn't take me more than a minute, a couple of minutes to move around and see uh, what, if there's anything, oops, and if there's anything that I can find. So I'm just going <coughs> to. Give me an arc. Um, well, let me tell you one thing. And then I'll need to check. My, hang on a second. Dungeon Master down. No, I'm just kidding. What I'd like um, to do, do this room to the edge here, to the, you know, come over here to the edge, look around, and then up here and look around at the thing. And, uh, okay. That's take maybe five minutes to do that. So while you're exploring and casting, you two are not getting in the time for a short rest, just so you're aware. Yeah, correct. Um, all right. So you keep dropping that hint. You um <laughs> the second dragon is almost home. Um, Don't touch the little strange yeah. glyph thing. I just I will do this with everything and then you won't know, but uh that's my plan. Sometimes oh, I may know. forget, we but know. I just want, I just want you to, <laughs> I just don't want any, anyway, are you sure I don't want any don't bitching want if anything happens. Mm-hmm. Um, Cal, did you comply with Aurelius and let him see the two items you found or did you keep those to yourself? No, oh, I didn't find anything at all. <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> um, Let's see here, move along. Just a, just some dwarf bones up here. <laughs> so the one thing, so one thing you do mm-hmm. see magical wise, you see the standard magic on your friends. Um, you're extremely intelligent with a crazy memory. So if you want to give me a straight up intelligence check, uh, that's Aurelius I'm talking to. Sorry. No, save just a check. I say, I'm, just a straight I'm not up crazy check. intelligent. I'm just crazy. No, I'm not talking to you, Cal. You're crazy. You're bastard. just crazy. All right. 18. If and when you get within the range of your detect magic of, uh, let's roll a, ro- a luck check. Actually, let's do a roll off. Um, roll, Cal roll a d20. And um, Aurelius roll a d20 to see if you pass within his vision. If uh, if if Aurelius beats you, he you do. Now it's in my bag of holding, right? It doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> Another dimension in the bag of holding, though. Just saying. Well, it might matter in the bag of holding. That's true. Um, it doesn't matter anyway because you beat him, so we don't have to worry about the dimension. <laughs> I think you guys are probably right with the dimension. I wasn't thinking of that. Um, so anyway, you don't catch you don't catch him in your line of sight. What you do see, though. Definitely magic is these runes that you were looking at before. Okay. And they radiate. I believe conjuration. Yes, conjurate. Very, very strong conjuration. Um, and some divination too, as well. So conjuration and divination. Um, actually, the divination is slightly stronger. Hmm. So, and they all the other magic that you see. Um, Aurelius is the normal magic because when you go over by, obviously Drell is just meditating and um, both uh, Nam Foodle, at some point you probably pass Nam Foodle and um, Azrael hard at work carving, plucking out these scales. Um, the do, you do see some new magic I forgot about on um, Nam Foodle. Do you have a, oh, you wait, wait, you have a dimensional thing too, right? Quiver, which is also a different dimension. Yeah, never mind. You don't see that either. <laughs> Every, no magic for you. Suck um, it, Paige. You don't know nothing. All right, so what are you going to do? That's what you do roughly for about 20 minutes, let's say, because you're moving around the cavern. So for, so are, what are you going to do after you pretty much see nothing for 20 minutes? Um, then we're going to do comprehend languages and read the ruins on the circle. Perfect. So is that going to be another 10 minutes to comprehend language, or do you, do you have that? 10 minutes to cast, and it's non All right, And just so you know, you had a little period where you had to um, – Take a, a break, but right before you cast it because your haste <laughs> ran out and you were, yeah, but that was very short. It's, it's six seconds. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, right, right, right. So, um, 
Let me remove these things are no longer active. So I'm going to move these off my chart. You're just going to keep track of what you guys are doing. So um, you can then cast that. These ruins are they're primordial ruins. Okay. Um, and with the, the arcana that you rolled before in studying them, now knowing the language, this. Um, and I will I'm going to pop up a. Um, a handout that some of you have. And if you don't see it, it's because you just don't know this stuff. You're not that bright. Um, but the people that will see this when I pop up this handout and I will explain it just so anybody listening will catch it. But um, this is planar knowledge. Um, that's probably alphabetical. Here we go. Oh, the oh here it is the planes got it all right so this i'm going to pop up a thing about the inner planes um so what you're looking at let me just show player is a is a um it's got some notes on here but you don't have to read all that right now this is actually a really in-depth um uh layout or map of the inner planes and so when you think the prime material plane think of it like a ball and if you think of the shadow fell and the fey wild they're like two scooped out um, hemispheres that um, meet at the edges that go around the material plane. The astral and ethereal plane are travel planes that get you from one plane to the other. Um, they're kind of in between the planes. And then all around, uh, to complete the inner planes, all around the, um, the Shadowfell and uh, Feywild hemispheres are the um, elemental planes. Everybody knows the four basic elemental planes, but there's more to the elemental planes. Um, there are actually the there are actually um, these border planes that are a mixture of the two planes that they border. And the reason I'm bringing this all up is because you're with that role and now being able to read it, you're 100 percent sure that this window connects to the frost spell, uh, which is a a plane of um, it's actually down here, so I'll read it to you all. I think the description is down on here, I think. Just don't know where it is. Plane of Ice, top left. Winterfell? No, Frostfell. It's called oh, Frostfell. Plane of Ice. Wrong fantasy oh. world, Greg. <laughs> here it is. The Frostfell, also called the Plane of Ice, forms the border between the planes of air and water and is a seemingly endless glacier swept by constant raging blizzards. Frozen caverns twit. You remember all this from something you read when you were studying in your tower at Sossel, the Temple of Sossel. Frozen caverns twist through the plain of ice. It's a home to yetis. Remer, I'm going to get this wrong. Remer, remor diseases. Those are those big caterpillar things. Remoras. That I don't have. Remoras. Uh, I really like that was, yeah, remoras. Um, white dragons and other creatures of cold. The inhabitants of this plain are engaged in a never ending battle to prove their strength and their, ensure their survival. Give me a set uh, of that so, armor, please. What's that? Give me a set of that armor, please. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so that's what you know about. You can look at that anytime. There's another. Um, if you there's. Oh, I guess that's it. There's. Um, oh, if you look at the um, there's another plane. This one, too, shows you that there's actually a couple extra inner planes behind the, the, the most elemental planes. There's like the plane of ash, radiance, mineral, dust, salt, steam, vacuum and lightning so there's like these other little additional planes um so i'm not going to bore you all with all that stuff you can study it on your own time but that's what you glean from that sucker so this is a window communicating window basically from what you know to the frost belt well that shows you um and that takes you uh several that takes you probably another 10 or 15 minutes just going over each rune trying to figure out the runes themselves are more like they're they're like magical runes they don't actually communicate a specific thing as they do but connected, they it's kind of like think of it as a runes like you would use in a teleportation circle. So they need to match the runes on the other side in order for the the uh, window to function. Would I know how to activate this to use it, or would it require me to cast like a scrying? Or it does not require it does not require a spell. It requires a really good arcana check, which I believe you got. I got a twenty five. Yeah, you actually now that you can read it. You're you're fairly certain if you wanted to open this window, you could. Okay. Excellent. Don't do it. And, and, and we could walk through. 
No, no. Pe- no, no, no. It's a window. Pass. It's a window Do that I cannot be. So I, I was just seeing what kind of window it was. It's a window. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's a window. not a window you can open, it's right? It's not a window you can open. It's a it's a uh, paint. It's a solid glass window. Think of that is unbreakable. Um, so you do know though that you do know uh, one of the things you know by getting such an arcana check is if you if you mess up the runes on this side it would affect the effectiveness of the, the the connection between the other side of the window. So if you destroyed runes, which aren't easy to destroy, but are possible, um, that, that it would actually um, affect the window so that the other side of it wouldn't function. So if you, you know, if the person on the other side destroyed runes or you destroyed runes, it weakens the window. If you destroy all the window runes on one side um, or some combination on both sides, it may make it completely ineffective. Okay. Um, so that takes you a while gonna, to figure out. I'm going to inform, let's see, who's near me? No one. All right, I inform no one then. because I'm Well, here. you're talking to yourself. You're writing stuff down. You're you're taking etchings to match against other stuff. So this takes you a significant amount of time. I'll take um, the rest so, of the hour doing that. Yeah, so it's pretty much going to be your hour. So all that's left really, Cal, are you just going to kind of hang out when you get... If I, uh, well, if I don't find anything else out, if I don't find anything else interesting, I'm just going to rest. All right, meditate. we're going to say... So an hour, that little pillar of yeah, we're going to say an hour starts to come to an end. Um, mm-hmm. And so where we are at that, you're you're plucking, you guys are getting, so when I say you guys, I mean, I'm sorry, Nam and Az, you are um, finishing up getting like your last couple of scales. You're kind of at the point where like, well, I could fit this scale. This scale kind of looks cooler. I'll take this one. You just kind of, you kind of got your, the load of scales you want. Yeah, it's like a you load, may be thinking like a about load. other things to do with it. You're starting to, f- Feel though um, the bitter cold um, as as this as your resistance fading. This is happening for all of you. Resistance is we starting to fire. fade. We need a fire and, now, and you can feel the bitter cold. So you're not being affected by what's called extreme cold, which really causes level of exhaustion and just kind of can kill you. But you are feeling a numbness at the tips of your fingers and boots you weren't feeling before, and it will affect. So mechanically, you would have um, disadvantage on any strength or dexterity checks because you're kind of shivering. Um, Drell, you can actually do a short rest. So as you know, what that means is you can use any amount of hit dice you want to heal. Just remember, you don't get the hit dice. You only get half your hit dice back when you take a long rest. Yeah. Um, and you get any abilities you get back at a short rest. So if you click your short rest button on your character sheet, that should reset your abilities if they're set up right. And then, but you will have to manually roll the dice. And again, you can roll a la carte. You can see yeah. what the effect of one die is before you choose to roll a second die, a third die. I, I did, so and I am no longer bloodied. All right, so you've done all that already? I'm glad yeah. that you're on top of that. Perfect. Um, Cal, you are about 40 minutes to 45 minutes into a short rest, but you quite haven't quite finished one, and you're okay. just finishing. You're, like, sitting in front of this window, Aurelius. Um, again, the cold is you kind of feel yourself shiver, and you look around the room, and you're like, Shit, an hour's gone by. You were deep into the books and you weren't thinking. And just as that happens and you look up, the runes on the window start to light and go in like a circle. And they're like a light blue. Now everybody can see them that can see the. Um, and it's still. Oh, um, the other thing that happens. Daylight is an hour, correct? It is an hour. The daylight is going to go away. So we'll get, delete, move this sucker uh, here. Oh. <laughs> Would you so do just real- just for cinematic reasons, and because I think it's cool, the light snaps off, boom, and the glow, and everybody that can. So Drell, you're in the dark. Oh no, you have your. Oh wait, you have your dark vision goggles. I so you got, and no one's in the dark. On. But the only thing you can see beyond your dark vision is. Um, let's see if I can do this. Oh, that's dark. More dark vision. <laughs> you can see double dark vision. Double dark vision, more like it. Hey uh, now. A little too close. Really, to- that would be a good time to build your tower. <laughs> all right, I'm just setting up uh, a cool glow on these things. Yeah, it's not. He's not bringing it up on the rune thing, just for aesthetics reasons. So hopefully, you guys can see that there should be a little bluish glow around that. Did I yep. set it up as blue. Mm-hmm. I can't. But I'm around the corner with the dragon. Yeah. Should can I you see back? it? We're done. Oh, wait, now. I know I can't see it. Hang on. Here you go. I can't see because not as a line of sight. I'm heading back to the way way. Well, it's on the um. Let's see here. 
It may be because your your vision's too good. Oh, yeah, I can see it now. There's a little bluish glow around you. Um, all right. So um, let's see if Cal can see it. Yeah, Cal can see the light too. All right. So this, there's a little blue glow coming off this. The circles start lighting up. Um, Nam, you could probably see the bluish glow from there now that you're coming around the corner. As you can move yourself too, if you, unless you're going to harvest the second round. Um, but basically, um, Nam took off on you with oh, his. Oh, wait! If you're continuing, to, I thought we were done. If you want to harvest, I'll stay with you. No, I can do this. Can be like like teeth. And it stuff. is. It is getting cold. And, 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 and you guys crazy. are using your strength yeah. and dex, even though I'm not making you do checks for it to do this. So it is. It, it would be significantly hard. It would take you longer, basically. It would take longer. Uh, not because I give up, because that's going to be a waste of time. Um, unless you get a resistance on there. So, um, so are you going to follow Nam around there? Yeah, I'm just going to go my six. And get around the corner. Okay. All right, so this thing starts to spin in front of you as it starts to form into a, a into a landscape of a, a glacier, mountains, huge mountains. Oh, turned it on. And as it as it opens up, Aurelius, it's like it was already bitterly cold in here. It's like somebody opened up a negative 300 degree door right in front of you. And the cold, which makes sense with everything you're learning about this that certain energies can pass through if they're from the plane that the plane it's attached to, the cold passes through here, no problem. And you're like hitting the face with this super cold wind. It doesn't do any damage or anything. Um, and, but what is, as you look out to this, there's daylight out there. There's some sort of light source like daylight, but there's, there's snow blurring, blurring around. But even with all the snow, about 100 to 150 feet away from you, is the biggest dragon you have ever seen just hovering in there looking at it and you think that's the creature that activated it this thing is yes folks i'm bringing back colossal which is not in 5e this is a colossal dragon miniature wise it looks like this size wise it's not red fat? however is he fat it is massive yeah it is massive <laughs> um it looks like i'm gonna throw up a picture and i'll try to get some description for those of you just listening but um Still haven't seen the movie yet. So this window, just for clear, it is a closed window. It's a window, but as I just said, certain energies can pass through it. Did you very not low, see very the fear? Factor. Did you not see uh, the fear in the other dragon's eyes when you looked at this window? Were you not paying attention? Come on. So hang on a second. I gotta find my window here. Uh, all right, here we go. I forget you when you pop out windows, you cannot share them with the people. So that's an annoying. Roll twenty if you're listening. Fix that. Um, all right. So I'm going to show this to everybody. Just don't have to show it again. But this is a massive dragon. Like I said, it's classic. Oh, he's a handsome thing, boy. It's the biggest thing you've ever seen. And the reason the name's up there is because she immediately speaks. Her horns are like glowing from within. Her wings are glowing. She's covered in these white, brilliant white scales. She has wisps of long, like almost looks like, um, like um, hair as it's flowing in the wind and almost like a, Kind of like the same type of a, a Chinese dragon type thing coming off of her her snout, but she's obviously when her voice booms, she's obviously female. Her eyes are brilliant blue and in, in glowing as she hovers in the air, just beating back. And I mean, there's no way any creature should be allowed to fly in the blizzard you're looking at and uh, and stand out like she does. But she looks like she was born in the uh, Belfrost, and her voice co voice comes booming across. She says, "Who are you?" that would enter the lair of my offspring. Who are you to be there that would slay my offspring? And she's bad. she goes, I am Frembor Exuma, the eternal winter, mother to the white worms. Speak now while you still have breath. And yeah. as she says all that, the room, and you guys hear the voice booming through there, there is a dread that just fills the room all the way through everybody that's there. I'm going to need wisdom saves from everybody. There. Advantage. Uh, we work for the for the Sultan. We're friends with the Sultan. <laughs> uh, Aurelius, I'm not still, no on his, Aurelius is still with a 23 wisdom save, is on a roll of a lifetime with saves. That 20 from the Foodle. That <laughs> well, uh, 20 will anything. automatically pass, which is nice. So Foodle. Oh, no. Azrael, Azrael's high as a 14, not so much, and he gets he gets advantage. Why do you have advantage? Oh, you have advantage because of your wisdom. Dragon save. armor. Uh, yeah, um, I have advantage because of gnomish cunning. 
<laughs> unfortunately, Drell got a 13, not so good. And uh, like Cal dragons. got an 18. 18 seems like it should be a thing, but apparently not with the mother of all white dragons and she, her voice booming through there. You can actually see her from where you are, Drell, in that window. And you two are rocked to your core. So Aurelius passes, which is kind of funny because he's standing right there. You can almost feel her even 100 feet away. You can just feel her. Um, and uh, But he's standing strong. No, Namfoodle, unaffected, maybe because he just collected her, do- her son- offspring's <laughs> scales hey, and know, has a bag full of familiar? them. Who knows? Uh, Azrael, though, he's thinking maybe he failed. He's thinking maybe uh, maybe she's pissed that I have a bag full of the of the dragon scales. <laughs> so he's feeling that a little bit, thinking there's better places he could be. And um, Cal is also afraid. His dog instincts are kicking in. And Drell's just thinking, I just killed one of these. I don't want to fight another one. So he's looking like he wants to be out of here too. So this is what she says. How do you respond to anybody, mostly as Re- Aurelius, because you're standing in the window? I am. Uh, my name is Master Drake, a far traveler. We meant no offense. We were working. We are the chosen of the Sultan from the South. Mm-hmm. We have uh, we have come here to, unfortunately, we have slain your offspring. We meant no offense to her, but she attacks us. We were only defending ourselves. I speak the truth, and you can understand that. There's the nothing, I say. To kill There's nothing I say is false. Right? She <laughs> says, interesting that you would declare you're defending yourself when you would come into the home of my offspring this sultan i have not heard of this means nothing you are mice to me pittance cockroaches bugs and you will pay for the insolence that you have brought upon my offspring you will know if you survive my breath never to touch one of mine again and she arches back i'll give you one gift before you read before you kill me she starts inhaling now before you start spending your time speaking aurelius you know that you can reduce what comes through that window by destroying you cannot close it by doing what you opened it because she opened it on the other side either side can open it you literally have to destroy runes to reduce what comes through there okay so if i destroy the runes i can close it no. If you it, for each rune mechanically for each rune you destroy you will weaken the breath that is about to reek out of there. Oh, oh lord! All right. And so the oh, question is: the question is, so we're going to roll initiative. You, so get, we, I will give you because of all the knowledge and what you're dealing with, Aurelius. I will give you a chance, if you so choose, to ex- yell out or to your compatriots what you know about this ring and what that you think they should do. But that you have the time to do it, you don't have to do it. So I'm going to reset this while you decide what you're going to do. Um, and, and effectively, she's not, you have an entire round before she's, she's just taking in. Um, so you have, everybody has a round to act before, and it may take her longer um, as she draws it in. We'll, we'll check, but it looks like you basically at least have six seconds. Um, so everybody click when you're ready, click on your, do, your mini, the turn counter is up, your token, and go ahead and roll your initiatives. And we will set you up. Right, can, I, I, can I say something before my turn or say something out when it's my so turn? So you can say you can speak before your turn. Um, but rem- if you want to talk to her, you may lose the chance, depending on how many words come out of your mouth, you may lose the chance to warn your compatriots. So okay. speak wisely. You could possibly persuade her. You did kill her offspring and you're standing in his house. It's it's and and I am unafraid. <laughs> you are unafraid, which makes you even more need to die. <laughs> uh, you, may, you may be unafraid in, a, in six seconds, too, because you're just not with us anymore. All right, Aurelis, what are you going to say? How, how does one destroy the ruins? You literally have to do damage to them. All right, let me, let me explain this to you. So you think, because you rolled really well. This, the, um, so this is an object. So it's there are certain resistances to damage. Right. You have to roll to hit um, just because of the effectiveness of it. You don't think it's, it would be particularly hard to hit. Area effects can affect more of it. Mechanically, what it is, is it has a, um, there's a bunch of hit points that I'm going to do for a number. For each certain amount of hit points, you will erase a rune. So right. you could try to hit it with an area effect weapon. There's, I'm not going to tell you the exact details. You know the plane that I discussed. You know what it borders. You can use your intelligence to try to figure out if that matters. 
You know there's cold coming through, and she's probably going to breathe cold. So that's why you think there's a problem. Um, so that's what you know. But so and, you, and uh, uh, as far as this goes, I know energy transfers back and forth from in and, in and out. You right? know that the energy to the energies that are predominant are that are prevalent in the plane it's connected to can easily travel through. So cold can easily travel through. You know this plane borders air as well. So it wouldn't be a bad guess that lightning and thunder can pass through as well. Okay. Fire. Fire. And the fire probably cannot pass through, being that it is the plane of ice. So. But, it, but it could Whoa. destroy the uh, this right here. Fire could affect the ruins on this side. You don't need to pass through to affect the ruins on this side. All right, Aurelius, time's up. What are you saying? I'm going to point to the ruins and go, if, you, if we wish to live, destroy the ruins on this circle. And All right. So I'm going to order you guys in order here. And then so you yell that out before anybody goes like a, it's almost like a surprise round, but it's not. He basically says, you know, destroy these ruins if we want to live. And then it is Drell's turn. Drell, it is your turn. Yeah. See ya. All right, Drell, do it. You're afraid, so you can't advance on it anyway. No. Nope. Um, you can you get another check at the end of your turn. So. So initiative wise, we have Drell with a 22, Azrael with a 21, <laughs> Nam with a 16, Cal with a 15, and Aurelius is last, the one standing spit, in front of it. I spit at the baby's body as I run by its butchered carcass. Good. So the, yeah, so that so the northeast corridor you came out of is not difficult terrain. So that's the way to run. Yeah. Now it is possible when you get down past the log that you might have some difficulties figuring out what direction you're going in, but yeah, worry about I didn't that when get, you get that there. far anyway. All right. Um so now I'm making my check again. Yes. <laughs> I get a six. I am still terrified. You are still terrified of this dragon, and probably and probably rightly so. All right. I hate dragons. All right, Azrael, you unfortunately can't advance, but I you do know what to. he said, so I don't know what you have for range stuff uh, that you could attack. Fireball, level four. All right. Here's the, the fireball is going to hit a, so wait, a relic. Question, 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 question. How high is Small it? Is it like a the oh, no, no, you, actually, you could Can put it in such a way. In... I'm sorry. You could put it in such a way. You're right. You could put it in such a way. So height. it just, here's what I'm going to do. Make an Arcana check for me. Oh, no. DC 15 to see if you can oh, place no. it so it maximizes on the ring and doesn't hit um, Aurelius. And I'm if you using... do hit Aurelius, he will take quarter slash half damage instead of full I'm slash half. Using inspiration. Okay. Hmm. Advantage. Straight up roll. Oh crap! And I can't even use blessed. God is really upset. That. He didn't bloody me. He's like, I'm getting this guy. I, yeah. Hey, I didn't. I wasn't. I didn't stand you in front of the mirror in front of the window. <laughs> All right, you failed. So give me a. Um, I need a deck save out of you, Aurelius. Uh, against uh, um, against um, Azrael's DC. What's your DC? So, uh, Azrael ended up with a with an uh, eight DC, for his uh, uh, fifteen. Uh, so Ooh. you're gonna fail, but you only take half damage failing because you're just at the he's licking you at the edge yeah, of it because of the way level. I should have asked how high I was before I shot. That was on my that was on me. Well, it's at the ground level there, but that's all right. Oh, he's at ground level. I, yeah, I was, but this I, I what you know. were doing, you you are gonna ma you're gonna maximize potentially hit all the rooms. Whereas if okay. you put it too high, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have potentially hit. Uh, All right, so it's, it's going to do be... thirty damage. Hold correct? on one sec. I got to see. It's going to do thirty-one just because of elemental adapt. Thirty-one damage. All right. Um, thirty-one damage. Thirty-six actually. Holy crap. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven damage because the higher level casting. There we go. All right. I don't like how that breaks it up. So that's a little annoying. Sorry, Aurelius. <laughs> And then all right, so Aurelius, so Aurelius, you take 15 damage, 15 fire damage. Uh, no, I would take uh I take more than that. I take 36 to 18 damage. Uh 18 damage? Okay, 18. So you did, you ended up doing 36. I'm sorry. All right. So one of the good news, the bad news is that this fire, so the ball explodes around all these rooms. It does not go through the window, which we knew it wouldn't. Um, mm -hmm. it just kind of hits it like it's hitting a wall, splashes all over the place. Part of maybe that's part of why it back it backfired a little bit on um Aurelius, but it does. It, it seems to, the ruins like almost look like they're melting in front of it. It seems to be very susceptible to fire. Um, oh. And it's going to take, so it takes. So it takes more damage from fire. 
Yes. So that just yes, took, yes, yes. It, took, it took it took what thirty seven doubled would be seven. No, fifty two. No, sixty two. Right. Double? No, it'd be 70, uh, 72. 72. 72. I, I, math is hard, people. 74, 37, not 36. I get one more because of the element, times elemental two is 72. 72. 37. I, I get one more because of elemental adept. I'm just not going to oh, write gosh. a macro. Okay, so 74. So, so um, it, there, um, three runes pop on it. No, I'm sorry. Six runes pop on it. Um, so there are, uh, there were only 10 runes. So there's only four runes left, which is not bad. Um, so that was really good damage. Uh, so that was Azrael's turn. Nam. Do I right. do my fear check? Pretty natural archer speed. Oh yeah. Do your fear. Azrael. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Nam. Right. Azrael, check your fear. Advantage because dragons. Sorry. I'll just go ahead. Oh. I'm still afraid. Can't roll. Uh, you're Three still very two. much afraid. Yep. Yeah. All right, with preternatural archer speed, I mutter something about uh, why can't we not open doors and windows until everybody has a long rest? <laughs> and uh, I do notice- He didn't that, open it. Because of the lack of a rest, because I was busy harvesting a dragon, I don't have any arcane shots left, which is a shame because bursting air would be really handy here. Uh, nor do I have action surges. So I'm just going to fire two arrows, but I am going to use two of my plus two arrows trying to maximize damage here. But we're going to fire the first one Four. at one of the runes and see what happens. So four four ruins are actually down. I just redid the math on so how many the actual left? calculator. How many? Um, all right, so there's there's six ruins left, and are you're firing at a rune. Are any of them damaged? Uh, one of them looks like it's 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 starting to crack. Like okay. some of them. So so four here here's how I describe it. Um, four ruins are completely out. They're not glowing anymore, and one looks like it's it's flickering. All right, so let's shoot a flickering one to take it out. Okay, so, rolled it. We got to roll the hit. Yep. Uh, any special uh, modifiers? Here we just gonna nope, no modifiers, just a straight up roll unless you're Whoop. using something crazy. Uh, that'll be a twenty-seven. You bury your arrow into it. It's a plus two arrow because I'm just going all in on this. So <laughs> the damage then would be uh, this roll plus two. So you got a twenty-seven nine, to hit. You do so eleven points of damage total. Magical. So eleven piercing damage. Even though it's magical, it does not seem to take um, oh. full effect on that. And then if it is it still around or that one shatter that rune? That one actually you, you got rid of the, the one ruin, so it actually um is down to um so that was it had six ruins, so it's down to five ruins. Oops. And is there so any five ruins? Why is my are there any here? other runes that are damaged or are the rest of them healthy? No, the rest are healthy, so we have five. All right. Then with my second shot, I will shoot a healthy rune again with a plus two, plus two arrow. Here we okay. go. Uh, that one is an 18. Does that hit a healthy rune? I'm getting my, uh, my, sorry, my roll 20 is on a lag for some reason. I got 18. So a 18 will hit a healthy rune. All right. And then rolling damage again. This is plus two because it's plus two. That'll be 14 points of damage to the healthy rune. All right. It, that last rune is barely existing, but it is still functioning. And I'm checking for both arrow recovery. They're oh wait, you recovery. no wait. It's still it's actually got a decent amount. I forget you only you only do half damage with even with right. a magic arrow. So, right. so, so seven damage. So all those arrows are going to be recoverable when this is over, assuming we all live. All right. So do you have anything else you're doing, Nam? No, because I haven't had a rest. So I, that's it. All right. So uh, Cal, you were afraid. So Nam, you got an E. Yeah. So Cal, you were afraid. So you can't advance on this sucker, and you can check at the end of your turn to see if you're no longer afraid. Yeah. What are you doing, sir? Uh, I'm going to throw a spear at it. <laughs> there you go. That works. So throw a spear at one of the runes. Well, I, I damage one of them. Shoot the one the arrow's sticking out of. Yep, you uh, can throw it at the one the arrow's buried into. There are two, yeah, the one arrow's buried into one that's no longer glowing and the one that's partially glowing. Shoot the partially glowing one. How do I, uh, I have spear one-handed, spear two-handed. How do you do it throwing? Uh, well, you don't, you, you just, just one-handed. Just do the one-handed because you can't throw oh. it two-handed. Um, and you won't okay. be at long range because you have disadvantage because I think you're outside of 30 or no. No, you're not. You're not. I, I just, nope, never mind. I was thinking of 20 with a uh, dagger. You should have, well, yeah, you actually you are outside of 30. Good thing you measured. All right, so roll with disadvantage. Nope. <laughs> you're, you're actually afraid of what's behind it too, so that might affect you, but not really. Um, all right, so that's going to hit with a 20 on your bad roll, and you are going to do nine piercing damage. You notice it does not take full piercing damage. Um, okay. 
down the spear. Oop. Two. And I'll throw a second spear, and then I will run away. Yeah, go ahead and throw the second spear. <laughs> so that was minus seven. All right, the second spear with disadvantage. So that's your first roll was an 18. What's your second roll? Oh, sorry. Uh, John, is it too late for me to back away around the corner? No, you can move if you can move. All right. That, so your 18 hits. So you do another five points of damage. Oh, I got that. That was a critical, too. Oh, no, it wasn't. I'm sorry. Never mind. So you oh. um that another rune goes out. For some reason my uh token is not updating and it's driving me nuts. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna keep track on paper. There we go. All right. All right. Um so that brings us to the last person before she likely breathes, and that is Aurelius. And we are down, we basically have four functioning runes. Uh, I also run away since I'm afraid, right? You don't have to. Uh, you can run away. You don't have you don't to run have away. To. You just can't imagine. Uh, oh, you also, um, uh, also, Cal, check to see if you lose your fear at the end of your round. But if you okay. want to run away, go ahead and run away. Yeah, yeah. my thought was, uh, can I run behind the window? Back up on that shelf? Uh, you is could fly like, up there. Uh, no, because you'd be advancing. Move? No, you'd be advancing toward her, so you can't Okay, so I'd have to literally go away from not to... Yeah, not you to literally have to go away from there. All right, so I'm going to uh, fly off 5, 10, 15, 20. I'm going to come right over here. Oop. Uh, come on. Oh, I'm on that thing. Sorry. I'm flying All right. Away. You're here. And I will do my, what am I rolling here? My wisdom check. Wisdom. Nineteen to get me? <laughs> uh, Nineteen. Fails. Not enough. She is I'm one bad mother. All so right. you are still afraid of her. Um, all right. That brings us to Aurelius. What are you going to do, sir? I look over my shoulder and everybody's run away. And I'm like, <laughs> what are you guys afraid of? Great. Yeah, you don't see you don't see it. You you can you actually have a tough time seeing Cal because technically this one rock is in your way too. Um so yeah, nobody, yep, nobody's there. <laughs> We're all gone. Great. See ya. <laughs> Great friend Borazuma. We do not wish to be enemies <laughs> of you, but unfortunately, you wish to try and kill us. Unfortunately, I would have to say goodbye. Move half my speed. Drop a fireball <laughs> right here on top of the the window. Dragon says, "Who is and, that?" And, and, okay. and the fire seemed, the fire seemed to do more damage, right? It, did, it definitely did. So go ahead and roll the damage. Is it uh just what what level is it? It's level four. Level four. All right, roll the damage for it. All right. So I need to cast fireball. I never use fireball. Uh, where are you? Lightning bolts. <laughs> God, so many spells all the time. Here it is, fireball. Ooh, and we're doing level four. We'll see what happens. And that will do 30 well, 32. 32. I roll 32 points of damage. Double will be 64. Maybe we'll meet again. So all but one rune, um, it, uh, all but one rune goes out, and there's just one rune still flickering barely. And she says, pray you never meet me again. And she breathes. A 300-foot cone pours <laughs> through oh. the opening, oh, God. filling the entire place up. Oh. But... What comes out, like those of you can still see in there, which is basically a relish can still has the good angle in there. You see this most powerful breath and you're like, oh my freaking God. But when it hits the window, um, you're like, oh my freaking moon goddess. When it hits the portal, it because of the only one room left, much of it is left behind and just slams up and shoots all over. But I do need a constitution save from everybody. And Who's going down, boys. My favorite kind. <laughs> I just need to live so I can bring you back to life. Not 20. Woo. That's uh, not I'm sorry. Not 18. Oh, Woo. no. That's right. <laughs> I'm one frosty dog. <laughs> I'm going to. 
I fear not. Oh my god, I failed. Oh no. <laughs> Joe <All right>. failed. <laughs> oh god. Um, so so Azrael right. got a 13. Uh Nam got a 20. Uh Drell got a 10. Aurelius got a seven, which he never fails anything. And um it, actually, no, I'm sorry. Cal got a 10. Drell got a 21. I am sorry to tell you that none of you passed. Oh, oh 21. Wow. You are dealing with the, you are dealing with the mother of all white dragons. You all take twenty two cold damage from her oh. the the a reduced oh. by nine <laughs> rune damage ninety percent. So you're um, saying I never finished my long my my short rest, huh? <laughs> no, you were yes, you did not finish it. So anybody who is down is down. But is as she dead. she says as she says as she breathes through it, the breath starts to. Is anybody who's not who's standing? Uh, standing. You're standing around. Right? standing. All right. Uh, is, anybody up? is anybody? I, I should ask. Is anybody down? So you are definitely a tough, tall drink of water. As you're still, uh, Drell has got to rest. Cal, are you still up? Or are you down? I am dead. Um, I can't. <laughs> well, you're not dead, it. but you're down. Well, I'm down. I guess. Yeah, you're not dead unless I do uh, your hit points on top of whatever took you to reduce to zero. Which maybe if she, if you hadn't reduced all those runes, I might have killed somebody. But no, not today. Which is all right. Um. All right, so we're going to stay in rounds just because how somebody did, died. How many did we take? 22? 22. Uh, 22, yep. That was 10% of the damage. Yeah. Um, it was, yeah, it was a little more than 10% because the ruins couldn't fully, or unless you got them all, couldn't fully reduce what she could I, put I out. Um, elements, I absorb elements. I can't absorb elements. It's, it's actually seven. So that was actually 25% of her damage. Oh, okay. It wasn't terrible. Okay. I am now bloodied again. Um, so she would have, if she did full, she would have done 88. So if you think about it, that'd be bad. Um, yeah, that wouldn't have been good. All right. So, um, that was the, uh, end of the round. Um, the she, is, went, good news is she went last as you, as you see, and the window just like, she feels like she's done with you. Cause at least you think so. Cause the window just snaps shut and it still barely works. Cause there's one room left. But there's not a lot. It will also affect any divination spells or anything that goes through, unless somebody goes and recarves all the runes again that match. Um, but that's okay, where we're at. Notes on, so <laughs> I spent my um, All right, so I'm going to move her out of the way because you no longer see uh, from uh, more. As soon as I'm like, sound off. Is everybody alive? Uh, uh, all right. I'm still here, but I'm a little so, cold. Damn it. So Drell, anybody else? <laughs> Drell, it's your turn, sir. Uh, well, I don't know she's gone, correct? Well, the fear goes away because oh, she's no longer you away. can't see her. She, her presence is no longer there. When the, right. when the portal closed, the thing that was causing your fear is on another plane. Gotcha. So you're good. You All can right. just you can just sense she's gone. Yeah. So I am And you uh, were cold. You guys were all cold from the biting uh, the numbing uh biting uh cold effect and now you're just covered in frost. Um <laughs> I, I walk over the corpse of the dragon and spit on it again, but the spit freezes in midair with a slight snapping sound and only ice hits the dead body. And I go up to Azrael and see if he needs any help. If he's upright, I am, uh, I'm more upright than I was at the end of the battle. So yeah, I'm doing much. okay, but I'm looking for anybody who needs help. I'm looking I'm more like you after last battle. Everybody ran. We <laughs> on the wall. Wait, my entire party ran on me? All right, so... Uh, <laughs> Priest, like are you well? Mm. That you... hurt a lot. His lips are frozen together. <laughs> it hurt a lot. Well, how's Nam Foodle looking? I can uh, see cold, him. Cold, but, but okay. <laughs> I'm up here in the corner. <laughs> okay, All right, so you... I'm up here, and that's my movement. Okay. There, As, what are you going to... Everybody sign off, but Cal... Sounds like. As what are what are you gonna do? Uh, I'm gonna attempt to move back to see if. Uh, so I Aurelius, you can hear the three of them, the three. You could hear Nam speaking. You could hear Drell just asking the question. He's pretty loud. Nam, yeah, you could hear answer back. And as um, you have a decent passive perception, so you probably heard As, even yeah. though he didn't speak particularly loud. You can hear him clunking around though in his armor. So yeah. <laughs> um, I get to there, and I will probably see him now. Can I see? I'm can I see? Hold off. Or because he's hidden. Okay. Or do I not know where he is? Or do I know where he went? Um, he wasn't hidden. You can see him. You can see his body where from your okay. miniature. So, right. so in that case, 
because I can see him. I'm going to start heading towards him. Well, uh, it's not your turn yet. Hang on. We're going to stay in rounds. Yep. So let me finish. As what'd you do? I, I just moved over. I am good. Okay. Nam, what are you doing? Uh, I'm going to try to regroup with the party, see what he's doing. So I'll head back to the center. Okay. And- Cal, make me a death save. Roll me a one. Oh, we, no, why would you, up, why would you wish to run on one on? Oh, Huzzah! Uh, he made it. Oh, Cal, 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 got a 13. Cal got a 13 and made his first death save. Um, all right, Aurelius, mm-hmm. now it's your turn. All right, so I'm going to move. Move. You're no longer hasted and you're no longer dancing. Yes, right there. As far as <laughs> And I you're know. on difficult terrain. Yeah, it was difficult terrain. All right, so go ahead and move your miniature. Three, six. That's as far as I can move six squares. Double, it's double moving right there. All right. So, um, I'll go ahead and do a turn. Way, if you have it. I, I say freaking dragons. Um, <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody to hear you say it except for Azrael's passive perception is so good. You hear Aurelius across the room say freaking dragon. Uh, he just hears, I can care. <laughs> All right. Drell, what are you going to be doing? Can I see anybody who needs help here? Uh, you can only see what you can see because the all the light sources are gone. I can't you just have your dark see anything. Visions. I'm going over here to prove that I'm not afraid. Once you pass the ice pool, it gets turns to difficult terrain, so you're good for now. Uh, okay, as so are you doing anything special? I'm right there. Uh, I'm going to move my move. Six, and I don't currently see anything, so. I don't see Aurelius, so I guess I'll just advance towards the mirror now that I know it's safe. There's nothing glowing on the mirror anymore. It doesn't seem to be activated. There's a lot of damage burn marks on it, some arrows sticking in it, a spear sticking in it. Um, and you guys can tell that are pro- that can see it that a lot of the ruins have been uh, um, chipped away or, or broken apart so they no longer can function. Um, right, Nam, what are you doing? It's my turn. Oh, are you done? You're good. Now, I'm done. I'm just saying. I'm heading done. full speed to the middle of the room to see if I can help anybody. All right, go ahead. And that'll bring us to a death save for Cal while Nam charges across. So you hit difficult right? Yeah, you hit difficult terrain right there. So you can only see what you can see. All right. Uh, that's two. two so uh, Cal rolled a 19. So he's got two uh, positive saves for death. So he's, he's on his way to recovery or stabilization. And now Aurelius is approaching him. Double move to get there. What you go through his bag and look for magic items? Why? <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying he's down, he's stabilized. He's down for a couple hours. All right, um, okay. uh, you don't do that. That was me metagaming for my players. All right, um, Aurelius, what are you going to do? I, it's a double move to get there, so that's all. Oh, so you can't do anything yet? All right. Um, so everybody, just everybody, go ahead and do a rounds worth if you have anything you want to add. But so so Drell, As, and Nam, go ahead and move. Remember, you're I hear where. Uh, where Aurelius is, uh, you can use a bonus action. Give me a perception check. They're not being, it'd be pretty easy to hear. I'm not seeing, he's not anything. moving super silent. Yeah, uh, likewise. Yeah, you guys don't see Aurelius, but I got an 11. Yeah, it's basically a 10 because he's not being overly quiet. Um, so you do have, you can hear that he's roughly on the other side of the room somewhere in the darkness. As you have a really good idea where he is, because you're passive perception, perception, you have those angel ears that we keep talking about. You can hear him. Um, so go ahead and move it how you guys want to, the three of you. Uh, and then we'll, that'll bring us to Cal. Give us another save, Cal. That's six. That's this far point, as Oh, I one failed go. save. Feel like you're close to out of the woods. All right, Aurelius, what are you going to do now that you can apply some CPR? What are we doing? I feel like there could be just one, one wound away. Oh, but you know what? I'm going to save myself the potion. Um, you're going to use medicine? It's like a DC 10 medicine check to stabilize. But it's not. I have a healer's kit, so it's an automatic pass. So he stabilizes zero hit points. Okay. To break out some herbs, start wrapping them up, bandaging them up. So you are now stabilized, Cal, so you don't have to worry about death saves anymore. And with that being the end of Aurelius's round and our... our, (laughs) Don't open the window. (laughs) Our our player... (laughs) um, for Actually, Cal, you knew he didn't open the window. That was an R factor of one. That's what I'm going to say. That was a terrible window. <laughs> the others don't know that he, the others saw him playing with it. Cal, actually, you may not have known because it just, he was sitting in front of it and it just opened up. So uh, maybe he did open it. Um, all right. I'm going so to assume he was stupid and opened it. <laughs> yeah, I think we all know what happened. Let's be honest. 
Do we? Do we really? I think we do. Devil um, door. I think we could all make a good guess. 2.0. Stupid. Devil door. Dragon both those window, items. Just stop. <laughs> Of both those items, I was the last one standing. That's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> well, the, the the funny thing is, I I was thinking that this portal might be Nam's Devil Door, but apparently it was just a relic of Devil Door too. I leave the window for two minutes. Two minutes. Just Devil Window. Well, it was over yeah. an hour. To be Actually, it was an hour and a half to harvest. So, the dragon, still. so we are out. Of, so we are out of rounds. You are still very cold, but not deathly cold. There's still a ton of treasure buried in the ice in here. The window seems to be off at the moment and barely functioning. So what is, as a group, what are your plans um, for surviving and collect? I assume you still want to try to get this forward. There's a ton of treasure, guys. What's the plan? So I look at at the mage who's, I still can't decide if he's smart or not. So there's one rune left? There's one rune that's barely still Can I reach it? (laughs) Yeah, you can walk up and slap it if you want. Okay, so I have an axe oh, that no. automatically criticals uh, structures. <laughs> and like I is just, that a real thing, or are you just saying that to me? No, 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 that's a real thing. Um, it doesn't take that, but that's fine. Um, yeah. you, no, no, no I just want it. I want there to not be enough rock left to carve well, this if it, it actually, if it, place. If it automatically criticals structures, it then flares. So that's actually cool. You bring it back, you slam your axe down into that's the moon true, axe. Yeah. Radiant energy explodes, and the other energy I can never remember, which I think is cold. Um, nice. And with the the co- if it's radiant, cold, it doesn't cold. actually see, it seem to affect it. But the radiant it's damage radiant. itself does plenty to it, and it explodes the ruin. And it you don't know anything about this, but it's it was the last glowing ruin that you saw, and so now it, you think that just based on. General mechanics and what um, well, what Aurelius said that you have done the job. So yes. what he thinks is if the cold hits it, is like fix it, Felix, it all opens it up again. Yeah, it healed all of them, and she's just <laughs> sitting there, like right cool. there, like a foot away from it. And I dive, uh, I dive in, I dive job, in, Joe. or does it explode? Holding my axe. You ruined it. <laughs> Unfortunately, it wouldn't pass through it if you dove in, but that's okay. We're done. So, uh, well, so what's the, so basically, if you want to chip out the ice, it's going to take you hours and hours and hours. So. Like a, maybe a full day of working on it. If you have, we can do. Um, you can do short rests or whatever you need, and we can. And you can just tell me generally what you're doing. If you're using any types of fire to melt it or any types of clever ideas, it'll speed things up dramatically. So, so what I seeing everybody has decided to come back for the dragon. Um, my belief or my feeling is we should. Take a little bit. Of, I need to rest up a little bit because I took some damage from that. Uh, dragon you need spread. to rest up. You took uh, damage. The um, <laughs> but then, if nobody has any uh, ideas, I do have uh, a few spells that could help us have, speed it up. I um, I got flaming sphere. I I have flaming sphere as well. You we can run two at once. Yeah, we get two going and then have our belt scoop up behind it before it freezes. Yeah, you remember when you brought, came in here with a flaming sphere? It literally leaves a trough everywhere it goes, like a like a little, uh, um, almost like a, kind of almost like a little trench that goes around, and so you, and the co- coins are just floating in the trench for a while before they refreeze up. So if you had somebody following each of your flaming spheres, you could I probably feel like collect I could it. Clean up. I can. I can. Yeah, you could, with a bag. You guys could collect it in pretty pretty quick time. Because even wa- like walking in that area behind it wouldn't be quite as bad as, uh, although wet ice is a little slippery. So, but it would still you could still do it in a decent amount of time. But it it would cha- it would basically cut like twenty four hours into into maybe three or four hours worth of uh, doing maybe even quicker depending on how you the guys roll. We just do our only con- lasts for one minute, just to let you know. Right, it's not that long. Okay. Because um, it's not a long spell. No, no, I got that. That's true. Um, but but it'll stay melted for a while, and you can probably cover a lot of territory. Okay. So even though you only have the spears out for one minute, you could you can cover a lot of in a, in in a ten rounds. You could whip back. Yeah, you guys can cover a lot of track, and then you guys could even actually help collect coins. So okay, after it goes away, do we want so to rest? Are you guys doing that first? Or you taking your rest first? Uh, I'm going to rest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so why don't why don't we do another short rest for everybody? Okay. Um, if you've already like if you've already used up dice in a short, short? short, well, that's up to you. Do you guys want to do a long rest or a short rest? Let's do a short rest and decide. Well, what time do. of day is it? Because remember, we oh. can't go back at night. So it's it's well, we um, go back. we're just because the other option is if I take a short rest, 
I can put up my tower and we can take a long rest inside my adamantine tower. Oh, that's a good idea. I like this plan. And all uh, right. So we're going to do a short rest, yeah. all right. pick up all the coins, and then go pop up your uh, Oryx Tower of Goodness yes. as an adamantite adamantite tower, and yeah. then and then you're going to um, and then you're going to sit in the tower, coin your count your coins, and take a long rest. Correct. And the and the the tower Correct. itself is ten by ten, but the rooms are always always I'm warm. One hit die. Great. Yeah, always warm. All right. So everybody, do the short rest. Remember, Drell, you only have whatever dice you have left from your last short rest. Yeah, I'm not. I'm keep. I I only used half of them, and I'm just gonna keep it at that. Okay. Because yeah, you'll get if you, keep my, it at, if you make it to your long rest, you'll get all your. You'll get the other half back, and you'll get. That's your what I'm hoping. Back. If I'm we don't, you know, if Dad, they they're separated parents. This guy's parents, so Dad <laughs> might show up. If the estranged father comes back, we're screwed. But the estranged, the estranged father, he was kind of like the weakling in the relationship. So he's got to walk. Oh, through yeah. Well, and that makes plane. sense. So you might get out of here before he shows up. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm going to use that. I, I'm no longer bloodied. And so I'm going um, to throw my tower down. Um, let's throw my tower down like right here. Oh, are you going to put it right there? Okay. Uh, unless, unless somebody has a better place to put it. It's out of sight of the door, the uh, thing. And it gets covered by the rock, so it and it gives us a view of the room. And I have a complete view of the room with my vision. So I'm thinking, unless somebody has a better idea where to put it, because yeah, you know, it's uh, yeah, right there is perfect. I mean, you have the best. You have 120 feet dark vision. Which way do you want the door say, to face? Do I want the area. door. I, I would like the door to face. The door's on the same side as the trap door. I'm just gonna say. Yeah, this this way, and make move one more. All right, two more over, now. Two more over and facing this way. So this right here? Right there, yeah, perfect. Okay. So this is a, um, are you casting any higher level or it's base level? Uh, I'm, I'm casting at a fourth level, so there's three levels. And inside my little hut, first of all, well, I got you here, there's going to be one room with a bed, uh, with beds, chairs, chest, and magical fireplace. All right. And that's going to so, be on the third floor. So, so this now, this is now, um, it's got an extra five, so it's 15 feet tall? So it's 30 um, feet tall. It's 10 because the base, tall. the base one is the base is ten feet tall. It's ten by ten, and it is it's and adding one, adding one four makes it, adding one four it, doubles it. And adding one four, adding one four makes it thirty feet. It's uh, okay. For, it's, 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 that it's that doesn't story. make any sense to me, but sure. It, it, um, it's a two, it's a two story tower. Right. Each, each story is ten feet. Right. Two stories is twenty feet. But it's only ten feet according to this the description. The each level of tower is ten feet tall. Oh, each level is 10 feet tall. Okay. 10 feet tall. It has um, all right. So here's what we need to roll. I'm going, I don't know the physics, physicalness of this. I'm not an engineer. I don't know the structure of ice. So we're gonna do a we're doing a luck check because you just placed a 30 foot tall adamantite tower on ice. So is the ice completely solidified in the bottom or is it I we mean, know yeah. well. No, because there's water pools. So um, no, that's not good. Okay. So no. So what yeah. we're doing here, we're gonna that's do. We don't know how thick it is here. <laughs> is so it was gonna be. It was gonna be a D twenty. Take a point of inspiration. Thank Anything you. from one to ten was gonna put it in the water, but you just doubled its size, or it made it bigger. So now it's gonna with a disadvantage. So roll me a D twenty. So roll oh, up. So you got a fourteen and an eight. Is that yep. correct? Yep. So <laughs> it falls into the water. The good news it is only the done, bottom. So I built another one on top of it. The good news is only twenty feet of her in the water. Oh, okay. <laughs> so only twenty feet of her in the water. So the bottom two, le yeah, the bottom two levels are in the water. Do they submerge in the water? So you, so like you, the water go into it. Yeah, the water. Well, it, the door is not waterproof, so it is leaking into the bottom level. Yeah. I thought it was impermeable. Nothing could get in. It's not impermeable. There's yeah, no, okay. the, this is one of the most ambiguous. This is one of the most spells that has the least amount of description I've ever seen. It really says yeah. nothing about it. Um, right. It's from a book that I don't, we don't even have in this system. Um, but I did okay it with Joe or when we first set up this campaign. Mm -hmm. So, but I was trying to figure out more about it. It really doesn't say much about it. So yeah. everything I say is canon about it because that's the way yeah. things go. It's equivalent to gotcha. Lehman's tiny hut. It's supposed to be equivalent to Lehman's tiny hut, but it's a tower. But it's uh, like, none of that is said in the description, yeah, yeah. so I don't know where Joe's getting that from. But it's just not <laughs> well, the interior uh -huh. is warm and dry, regardless of conditions outside. Right. So it's yeah, well, the, warm and dry. Yeah, but it doesn't say all the other stuff that Lehman says, so wow. so that doesn't work. But anyway, it is a adamantite tower. It's in the water. It's, it's it looks kind of cool just poking up from the water. Um, so hat now in hindsight, now it's a ten foot tall tower. 
Yeah, with your brilliant intelligence, if you'd known if you had put it on the other side of the log over here, it would have been um, on solid ground, but that's okay. Um, all right. So are you going to attempt to use this tower? Now, you've collected all the coins, so I'll give you that too. Are you going to attempt to long rest inside the top of this tower, squeezing the top last level? or yeah, Why not? I'll squeeze the top of it. All right. So you can go through the top in the hat. There's a hatch in the top. Yep. So that'll take you to the last level. What was the last level? Well, I was going to say the first level was a fireplace and bed. The second level was a uh, had a magical brazier with wash tubs and toilets. And the top level was going to be just a dining space with chairs, fire, uh, fireplace. All right. So you guys are living in the dining space. You can all squeeze in there if you'd like. It's 10 by 10, which is not insane, but if you know, it's not impossible to sleep in. So is everybody going to go take their long rest in there? It's not as yeah. cool as it would have been. Um, <laughs> any, the icy Please bottom part. Warm, though. Yeah. Well, the top is definitely warm. And the bottom parts is not icing up because of the warmth of it. It's just staying nice in the water. So it's it's like you could go down and bathe in it if you well, want. That would have been a great way water. to get the coins out. Could have swam yeah, down into the tower. Put the coins right? <laughs> well, you already once he did this, you guys have already collected all the to coins. So because he did this after your short rest and after you collected the coins, right? No, the short. I need to short rest in order to cast the tower. The tower is going. to Oh, be okay. So this is before anything happens. I, right. I, I only have one. I can only cast one. Um, Flaming Spear. I'm just running out of spells. So um, no, I, well, I'm confused, Joe. What's what was the? I thought you were doing the the I short did, rest, I collecting short, the stuff, then and then the tower. The short rest, so I can do arcane arc recovery. So okay. I can cast this. I can okay. cast one Flaming Spear prior, and so can Devin. I'm not sure how many second level spells do you have, Devin? I have one third left in that. So you're still not answering my question. You keep. So did you do? Did you collect the coins? And are we on the long rest? I'm going to collect as many coins as we can get for one flaming spear. Okay. Two flaming spears, I guess, in this case. And then we're doing a short rest, and then and then the tower sinks. And then we're Okay. To so you can collect. We'll do it. You can collect all the coins. You got your short rest, whether you whatever order you did it in. I just wanted to make sure this happened after the fact. So this happened afterwards. So you guys are at your long rest part of your, your plan. So is everybody long resting inside the uh, third level of the, ta of the uh, tower? Yes, of whatever. Um, this tower, I'll actually show you a cool, this, this tower actually looks pretty cool poking out of the water. Um, I have a cool picture of it. Unfortunately, for these people listening, it doesn't help you out. But um, it is this cool black adamantite version, which actually even matches the picture even better now. Um, as soon as I can find it. There's so many handouts now. Um, or, I got it. Here we go. I will share this with the players. It does not have the cool rainbow effect on the top, but it looks like that. I have cool uh, deduced, by the way, the lake is 20 feet deep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did determine the, the water part of the lake is 20 feet deep. Um, or, well, part of it's covered with ice. Part of it, there's about five to six feet of ice, at least two, um, okay. that is, is there with this part of that 10, uh, 20 feet. That's pretty hard. All right. Six feet of ice is a lot. All right. Um, so can we do a long rest? Click the long rest thingy? Yes. So you guys can complete your long rest. While you do those numbers, I will tell you what's in your hoard. Um, uh, feels good to get my spells back. I feel like a whole mage again. Uh, feels good not to be bleeding. Yeah. The, well, the other thing is Lehman's uh, tiny hut is a ritual. This uh, the the Galder's tower is uh, actually can't use the spell slot, which is the other thing which can. Well, Gal Galder's cool. tower actually has it would be cooler in like if you're fighting or something like that. Lehman's wouldn't be so useful. Um, uh, Lehman's would be but also you could go in and out of it, but enemies couldn't. Yeah, well, that's a little ambiguous too. So I would have some ruling. I like you can't just sit outside of it with a dragon pounding on it. I mean, that just seems lame. But anyway, that's another story for another time. So under the ice, you collected. You ready to write all this down? I'm ready. All right, one thousand four hundred ninety-three copper pieces. Unless you left all the copper, but that's there. Um, Three thousand six hundred thirty-eight silver pieces. Yeah. Like when there's more silver than copper. 15,260 gold yeah. pieces. I like when there's more gold than silver. 1,000 platinum. Oh. <laughs> 1,697 platinum, which is the equivalent of 16,970 gold. So you've already got like 32,000 gold pieces. Yeah, buy my tower. Um, two black pearls, each worth uh, 250 gold pieces. Nice. Two small alexandrite um, that are they're, they're like a blue stone. I'll show you guys pictures. But they're like a blue typical uh, gem. One blue spinel, and these are all worth 250 gold. So five gems. If you want to make it easy, five gems slash precious stones worth 250 gold. 
And besides that, you, there was no magic items or anything um, except for what Cal found and has uh, on his person, um, which you guys don't know about uh, metagame wise. And but that was it. Oh, wait, no, nope, I lied. There was also a um, this was floating in the water so that Cal didn't find this. You guys found this or maybe he found it was looking, but you guys all found it together. There was a waterproof bone scroll case. Ooh. Ooh. Also in there. Okay. It was actually frozen, but it seemed waterproof when you took it out of the melted can we, puddle. Can we look at it during the short during our long rest? Yeah, the long rest. So it has um, you can read it. It has um several spells in there. Um, a scroll of arcane lock. Oh, nice. A summon lesser demon. Uh, and a six level mat. That's th- that was third level, and a six level ma- demon spell. Mass <laughs> suggestion. <laughs> I found the devil and door on a scroll. Mm-hmm. So there's your um no the devil door is major demon. Um and it's devil, not demon. All right. So <laughs> small door. So those are all, all the items that you found. Um Cal, are you going to do anything? Because if you on a long rest, you can identify those, but you will have to, you're all crammed into a 10 by 10 foot room. So people would see you looking at them. So that's up to you whether you want to do that or not. If you no, I, not I, I'm study, gonna take I'm gonna take them out of my bag. Okay, if you, yeah, yeah, if you don't study them, you don't I'm, know I'm they not are. keeping them. I was just All right, so just, the <laughs> so just by looking at them, I will share these with you as I pop them up. So this is what this one looks like. Mm-hmm. You know now, it also has cold wings on the bottle. I probably should have mentioned that because um, that kind of gives it away. But now that you see it, this is, and you identify it, this is a potion of flying. Oh, nice. And up too many of those. So it's a, a glass bottle with bluish water with clouds floating in it and also just this like clear bubble at the top of it. And it's Can in a got a gold. It to fly? It's got yeah, a gold I'm gonna stopper. Keep that one. <laughs> it's got a gold stopper and some gold like wings kind of on the, attached to the sides of the uh, vial. And then the other thing that you find that could be really useful, particularly for one individual in this party, is a manual of gainful exercise. Hey. So this wonderful item that I'm showing That's to you. I already did a description crazy. of the of the book, so I won't do it again. But now you see a cool picture of it. This thing is cool because. You have to spend 48 hours over a period of six days studying it. Um, so you have to spend time. So it doesn't come right away. But it increases your strength by two. Well, but it also, increases, me. it also increases your maximum by two. Oh, so oh. even if you're not at your maximum, it increases it for future if you were to get that ability. It feels like a breathing. barbarian. Tool. means you can go to 22. Holy uh, crap. So these are, that just so you guys I'm know. torn. Um, a book? Just so you guys know, um, <laughs> just for my mechanics wise, a lot of these, when you run into items like this, I'm not setting these up for a particular person. Um, these are very random. So sometimes it'll lean one way or the other. And this might be particularly good for one person, not others, but it's random. So this is what you get. Who cares? Stronger um, stronger. He hits harder. So those are the two items that were found on top of the scroll case um, for magic items and the Bezor that you have. You guys make it through your rest, as we say. It so now when you finished, when you finished, um, so I'm gonna trying to figure out the time. It was like eleven. It was like close to twelve o'clock when you when you dealt with the uh, the mother of all white dragons, um, and then you put several hours into um, um, doing the ice thing. Give me a D four roll. Any uh, let's well let's, Aurelius, give me a D four roll, and we'll add two hours on to this. So it took four hours. So that got you to 4.30. Um, you took another short rest, which got you before that, I'm sorry, which takes 5.30. So now you're doing your long rest at 5.30. So eight hours later will bring you to, um, is that five and a half? Let's see, seven and a half, right? Can't do this math. Um, five and a half to, would be six and a half hours to get you to, oh, yeah. No, what? five and a half hours to wait. I bet you're right. Six and a half. I can't do that either. Is it six and a half to get you to midnight? Something like that. Yeah, we're going to call it three. Six to get you to eleven, then thirty yeah, minutes gonna, to get 12. you to twelve. All right, so six we're going to call it like we're going to call it like it's two in the morning. That's what we're calling. Yeah, it. seems about it's right. It's various structure issues. Two in the morning. It is two o'clock in the morning, which you know um, will put you into a very tiny force cage. Mm. The force cage is is roughly it's a circle, but it's roughly the same size of what you're squished into now. Um, but it would be warmer. It, well, this is actually inside the towers room to, is, is very comfortable. Actually, it's probably go gross and hot and musty now. 
Uh, well, yes, there is a lot of there is. Yeah, you guys haven't particularly. Although, as I mentioned Wait, before, the 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 bathing room that he had created is underwater, but the water in the tower is like bathwater uh-huh. because of what the tower does to it. So you all could have gone down to the floor below, climbed down the ladder, and swum in the pool that is in the second level and cleaned Take yourselves off bath. if you so choose. Yeah, so you guys can be not so stinky if you want. Um, plus, with some prestidigitation, you could clean up any of the stench that the the funk that was there. So it's actually not. Besides the fact that you got feet in each other's face and hands and stuff, if you sit on chairs, it'll be a little easier. So what's the plan? Those are what's going on. You know the situation. What's the plan? Um, first of all, I'm going to give the flying potion to Drell because I think there would be nothing funnier to watch than a raging flying barbarian. I like that. So that's all yours. So make sure you put that on your sheet, maybe in the bio section or whatever. I oh will, what, I, what I'm going to do for you, mm-hmm. Craig slash Drell, yes. is I'm going to move this handout of the flying potion into your magic item section on your in your handouts. Sounds good. So I'm when you look, talk. it'll be there if you need to reference it and look. You can also just use the eye to figure out what um, what. Um, you know, fly potion does because it's yeah. just a standard fly potion. So, but I'll throw gonna, it in there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tuck that book back in my bag of holding for now. Okay. Are we sure that that wasn't Aurelius doing that negotiation? <laughs> What's that? I feel like there was a negotiation and I wasn't even paying attention. What negotiation? <laughs> the one that ended up with me with a potion and a book in his uh, bag. Well, you had made a comment that you weren't into the book, so maybe that. No, it. I made a comment that I was torn because <laughs> it was a book. I don't know. Uh, I was thinking of taking I, it to my I local will, library and, and, we, and checking that one back in and checking a different if, one out. But. If I know what it is, if we understand what it is, <laughs> I'm going to. Yeah, you know. You, you, yeah, drill. you know exactly. You know exactly what it is. I recommend a drill learn his ABCs for at least forty-eight hours or six days, and and work. <laughs> I'll help him spell out the words for him. Explain no. I may things. need some help with the big words. I open up the, big, the first book of the page. It says, I lift things up. I put them down. Just do that. <laughs> so you have to spend, you have to spend a 48 hours over six days. So if you start now and you don't finish, the book is destroyed. So you have to finish the 48 hours and six days to get the results. So I don't know if you want to start now. No, no, Plus, you know, right now. I'm, I'm telling no, you. I don't, do I don't know. And I'm not, and I'm not taking it from uh, Cal either. I'm just, yeah, we we got it in the bag. We got it in the bag in case yeah. we need it later. No, I don't think anybody wants to. St- nobody wants to start reading in this cramped little tower. Okay, that's right. Well, you you do have to do exercises with it too, so that would make <laughs> sense that it's not going to work that well in this tower. Uh, what's going in chat is the um, treasure. Are those our totals? That's what you each get. We we each get that. Um, I am deducting uh, some gold which I'm putting into the group treasury, which we use to buy things like heal potions because oh. other people don't. And I've, I've <laughs> um, a, uh, I am a healer. A I just don't need it. Yes. I'm going to show you something that you seem to be uh, forgetting about that's in your magic items that I just saw. This gives you advantage oh, yeah. on, pro- yeah, this gives you advantage on uh, fear checks, which you've been doing a bunch of. Really? Where? where? Yeah. So it gives you advantage on charisma checks for intimidation, and it also gives you advantage on saving throws. When for did I fight. get that? You started with it. Oh, I did not. It was know one that. of your items you started with. Oh. So I am the well, proud you know owner we'll say, of a brazen we'll, we'll say, man. We'll, we'll say that you've been wearing it as a toe ring, and just realize now that it might be more effective on your fingers. You started reading yeah. that book. You got some insight. <laughs> Superstitious. Um, all right. So you guys finished your long rest. Um, it is like we said, two in the morning. What's the plan to go back to in Drizzles? You want to wait because you can just sit here and wait. There's nothing seeming to come. This cave probably doesn't attract much besides the snow drakes, and it is the fearsome po- uh, um, Tzem Podris used to live here. Uh, Mom seems to have been cut off at the time. Um, so, hey, um, uh, give I, me, Nam, give me an insight check. Nam, is that Nam? Yeah. Advantage. Yeah, I would say you have advantage because of the this stuff. Why you, you know. ask? Just saying. Uh, oh, look at that! Look at that! Right. Twenty-one. You suddenly you put together now between your comment about the ways and the fear in in Tizem's eye yeah. that he probably doesn't like being checked up by by mommy. Yeah, mom's who does though? She <laughs> might be a little overbearing. 
Um, and so that was kind of his, when he looked at that area and had the fear in his eyes, you, like, he was like, oh, what? Yeah, I'm not yeah. dealing with these he was, people. he was having some flashbacks, um, of being, you know, all right. So, chest, this call. so what's, what's the plan for the next, uh, cause if it's, it's, uh, it's, if you wait eight more hours, he'll be open. Yeah. Um, just taking his share of the treasure and that's it. I feel like. And so, I do express uh, my gratitude to all of the party members for joining me on this dangerous mission and uh, of helping me recover the the noble soul of Snow Fury the Chipmunk uh, <laughs> and infusing it with his dragon essence and thereby creating a new, more nobler Chipmunk. So, we have eight hours, right? Uh, you have eight hours That's if cool. you want to teleport back at the... Uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, transcribe a spell into my okay so you're gonna hang out in the tower um yeah and you guys are in the you're in the kitchen section we said that will, that will take me it'll take me the two dining hours. area the it'll dining take me two area. hours to do that um i'm also i might as well place um i looked at the <laughs> ruins up here for an hour and all they're all destroyed at this point in time the ruins yeah 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 drow finished off the last one um i would recommend we stay close until we are ready to leave uh, just in case and we don't know what else might be coming to this layer or if there's any other. Is this the dining room? I think it is. Uh, Got the little pot, kitchen pot there. Yeah. It's not, uh, and there's a table that I have you sitting at. Yeah, there's very small on my screen here. Hold on. <laughs> That's how big it is. That's the sad truth. Yeah, it is. Well, remember the, the fighting is for, is a, uh, it's designed for um, combat. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You don't, you, you're, it's including, yeah. It, like, five feet is not your, really what you have. So. Right. so this is, this is your tiny little tower. You can. Yeah. Um, you can't see the coolness because you're stacked up on top of you. Damn it. All right. All right this go. is your crowd. So you're all crowded in there. All right. Um, is anybody else doing anything over the eight hours? Or can I blow right through those? Uh, you can blow right through. Sounds like I can blow through them. All right. Through your eight hours are up. You think that it's just past 10 o'clock, unless for some reason and Drizzle's opening up late. You believe he's there. Let's do it. Everybody mm -hmm. whipping out their teleportation scrolls. I whip yep. it out. Oop, that came out wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Roll out. Let's go. Um, there's a Roll uh, out the blue energy circles around you. Kind of looks in my world like a, a Star Trek teleporter as you phase out. Um, and it even <laughs> makes that. Yeah, I was just about to say it makes that cool sound that I can't make. So and you guys all phase out and you end up at. In drizzle. So you end up back in this fantastical magic shop. Um, you are currently at the northmost end, crammed into this little force cage, and uh, it looks like uh, and Drizzle is floating on his little tensor's disc. And Drizzle is a mouse folk, um, dressed up in finery, got his little turban on, and is um, got one of those long flowing robes with uh, um, made of, of uh, some sort of fine silk or other cloth. And he's he doesn't like to seem to walk, so he floats around on this own little disc that he has. And so he comes, he sees you. Oh, welcome back. It's great to see you. Oops, wrong accent. It's very good to see you. Um, and he floats up to you and he whispers something um, into a item on his wrist. And the shield, the uh, force cage goes down and allows you to come out and uh, exit. You must think so must have gone very, very well. You look cold. Warm yourself up. And uh, I approach yeah, let's, I you guys can come down the ladder and, and, and go to the, the, there's some books up there for a little coffee nook. If you're waiting for your turn to teleport somewhere, but. I am um, drizzle, uh, pulling the sphere from my. Down at, yeah. Down in the battle of the magic shop is, is tables of scrolls and, and um, uh, a lot of arcane focuses. And then there's also, um, there's also these two, as you remember, the two huge uh, or large clockwork cats just sitting there watching all of your movement. Um, by the sides of the door that enters into this um, ornate little shop, and uh, most excellent. Are you, do you do you approach him with? Do you have the bezor in your hand? I do. I pull the bezor out of my uh, quiver, and I say the ah. Uh, the as most you said, the, the dragon was there, and the uh, bezor has been recovered. Well, you say that like there might have been some doubt. This is what I do for a living, little now. There, there was no doubt. I'm just I, you never cease to amaze me and drizzle with your skill at. At, well, uh, I was I I do not pray very much, and I do not know what your you know denominations are. I know the Moon Goddess is very big here, but I must say, last night I said a a a prayer for all of your success, 
because I was hoping that my now new five favorite customers would return to town and bless me with their coin and their presence. Um, and he says, also, I was very interested to see this snow fairy cloak, cloak in action. Um, uh, so if I can take this from you, we have to finish our tran- our transaction. So I yes, will need. I hand him. I hand him the sphere. No, the the sort yep. of personal thing. I will need another three thousand gold to actually create it. Now, not a problem. Uh, here you go. And I hand him. Now uh, I have I have been prepping for this um, for your return. So I am very ready um, to start this. So it's only going to take me uh, about a few days. I should have this ready for two days. In two days, actually, I will start today. You are such good customers. I will get on it today. I appreciate you expediting this. So this is, uh, we are now on the 22nd. So I should have it ready. Um, I remember I am a, a night owl. So I like the 10 to nine shift or 10 to eight shift. So I will actually have it ready. Um, after eight, you could come for a private uh, visiting after eight o'clock um, tomorrow night. And I will have this ready for you. Nice. Um, and um, And I will be happy to, uh, present you with the Snow Fury cloak. Did you have any, um, I, since I have not made it, I have all the essence of it, I can make this to whatever vision you have in your mind of what it looks like. Well, I really wanted to pay tribute to both the chipmunk, Snow Fury himself, who was an albino chipmunk, as I, I think I told you. And so it's should be very white. Plus that also pays tribute to the creature's soul we had to extract to order to 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 build yeah. it. So uh, let's go very with white, with sort it. of the, if you could put the, you know, the pattern of a chipmunk sort of faded in like a in like a slightly darker white on into that, so like the chipmunk stripes, you know, kind of thing in the back of the cloak, that'd be that'd be great. And then have like sort of a uh, just a hint, just a just a subtle hint of dragon scale. Again, it's all white, so for distance, it would look like a white cloak. Do you did you bring any dragon scale with you? I hold the bag and just drop it. We oh, have most excellent. Bit. I would I I will take some of this. I do not need. It depends. Do you want it to? You don't want it completely made of dragon scale, correct? No. Well, unless that would imbue it in any additional magic properties, we didn't. Well, already. it is already. I, I was planning that part of the essence of it will make you resistance. To I don't think gold. we need to use that many scales. Just for just. Oh no, no, no you could keep scale. that. I can make a brooch. The connection could be a dragon scale if you so choose. Ah, oh, that'd be excellent. Um, yeah, let's do that. And then you know, mostly for appearance, you want it to be flowy. Yes. Um, so I don't think we want to make a lot of it. Maybe I could take a couple little ones and put I it there. Do you, want a, do, you, do you want a hood or a collar on it? Uh, I think just a just a uh, a collar would be good. So I could put little uh, ornaments on the corners yes. of the I collar. Good if it was very flowy, so that whatever spirit was inside could could move the cloak almost of its own will. Yes. Okay. Well, I would make sure it is a very flowy material, but also useful in the rain and colder weather. But you will have the resistance, so it, will, it itself will work for that. But um, more for the rain, I would say. All right, I will get to work on this then. So you all, I, you look like you've... Uh, Any more you healing rest? potions? Any more healing potions while we're here? Oh, well, it takes me a little while to do those. And you kind of just... Let me see what I have left in my stock. You kind of, bought, <laughs> we, kind of bought buy, me out on your last trip. We did but um, I, did, I did have a couple, I think, left um, that you did not buy. And um, I can see what I put together over the day you were gone. Uh, so I do have one more regular healing that I was able to create yesterday while you were gone. Take it. Um, so if you'd like to buy that one, uh, I think it was 50 gold I was charging. Yep. None. Um, let me find my my uh, handout for myself. Oh, here we go. Um, my ledger. Hmm. Uh, 11, where's my results? I have my... Uh, so I still have... I still have one superior, which is uh that was five hundred. Five hundred cold, yes. I've already got one, so I'm not. I'll, I'll, t- I'll take one. I'll take that. There we okay. go. That's All right, excellent. You are moving up the ranks of one of my favorite customers. <laughs> um, so and I still have. That? I have. Uh, it looks like I have. Um, I actually still have two regular in store too. Did you want those? Two more regular? Yes. Done. Gone. All right. And one greater. I had I must have had that hidden away and found that when I tried to replenish. I just need to Take keep the greater. The greater is a hundred the greater is a hundred gold. Yeah. I so now I am completely out of stock. Price. 
So I can I make uh, usually one or two of the uh, regular a day I can create if I am not uh, totally interrupted because I work here alone. Aren't you distracted by making that amazing cloak though? Well, that is the truth. So I will be busy this next, this today and tomorrow. So I will not be making potions. But um, and it takes me a little bit longer to make the other ones over mostly mostly over a week's time to get the other ones. Uh, some of them I can make them so that they show up in more than a single batch, except for supreme healing. That I must have the money up front and make. That is very hard to make, um, and that is very. That's why it is so expensive. Um, but anyway, uh, so we are done here then, and uh, you will be. Looks like you had a long day and night. So uh, I, for some reason, it looks like you all slept inside a very small space. I didn't know why. But, um, but I, will see you, uh, I will see you, Namfudal, uh, on the morrow evening. And then the rest of you, when, uh, when you have more coin in your it. pockets. Oh, speaking of which, did you make money? And he like, rubs his fingers together. Did you make much coin from the dragon itself? Did you remember yeah, one night? Seeing we're all Depends carrying, like, to we're literally carrying 400 pounds worth of coin on us. <laughs> right, yeah, we're yeah. A I don't know what, I don't know what you're telling me. Chinking, yeah. He's like, all right, yes, I will. How silly of me. Yes, you do seem to have made good. Good. I hope you are here to spend it, spend it on me soon. I mean, on our stuff soon. There's no better shop in the city. Sir. Um, Farewell, my friends. I and may oh, oh, I mean, bless you. I'm going to ask him if he has any uh, any literature in the uh, in the building. If he has any tomes, he wants soft pages. He's got to go. What to kind of like a like a what kind of tome? I'm looking for like a tome of understanding, volume number uh, two or number four, dexterity or wisdom. <laughs> specific, very specific volume. So you you're looking for an item that's very rare. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, I could do a divination for you for three hundred gold down and find a spot where one of those might exist. Nothing in the store, though, right? No, I this. I, yes, this is care. my okay. whole thing. I do not keep those in the store because then people would want to rob me. I'm okay. He's already he's already checking on something for me, so I'm good for now. But thank you. Do I have something for you? Let me double check. Yeah, he's checking on a staff for me. No, you didn't want to do the staff. No, no, I did. Oh, the staff is striking. You did. Yes, that's right. Yeah. It was yeah fifteen thousand uh, gold pieces just. All right. Um, all righty. All right. So you guys are going to head to where now? Well, I, I was going to put in the white dragon seal. I can do that after if it's not a problem. Oh, what do you want to do with that? I was just going to ask him about uh, just a. I was going to I was going to offer. Up, I don't know how she'd be willing to uh, for his his different parties. Um, I have enough dragon seals to make two sets of armor here. I have a exchange potentially i would give you back the pair you made me if you would make me a pair of white dragon scale half plate seeing so as you want a you want the same common. you want the same thing in so you're going to give me enough dragon scale and your armor to make you a new set of dragon scale indeed and i will add the second set of dragon scales enough to make another set of armor for whoever you would want to sell it to whoever type you'd want to make I would potentially want some money for that part, though, unless it would be necessary for the exchange for the first set of armor. Can you make reversible armor so you can just flip it in and out depending on what you <laughs> Reversible. Like, acid code. Scale acid code. Code. Acid code. I, he says, I will take, I, I will, will happily take your whatever extra white dragon scales that you have and your current armor that I now have to advertise as used. Um, and oh, I will take that. That's good business, man. It goes down no, the please. minute you walk it off the lot. <laughs> and then, and then, and I will, it, I will produce. I, I won't take it until you. I have the other one ready. I will take the dragon scales up front, though. What I need to make it, and then the other dragon scales, and then I will make you a new dragon, uh, the same as you have now, except for it will be white dragon. And would I get anything back for the second set of white dragon scales? You'll get my gratitude. The making. Uh, fair enough. You seem good. All right. What if I just take, I'll take half the dragon scales then. No, I don't need them. I was just messing with you. I mean, you are a good person. There there will possibly be a time where I could pay this back to you and something else that's good. Don't worry about it. I just don't know. It's very expensive. You know, you all are what we call one percenters. (laughs) Um, So you all have very, very large amounts of money and you can spend these on these things, but there are not that much. 
to, I mean, there are very wealthy in this town, but you have exceeded their uh, disposable income by quite a bit. Um, so there's not a lot of people running around looking for these things at this moment. Um, so well, this is why you were one of the reasons that you are my five favorite customers. Um, I don't know. You have another set of armor. Can, 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 you, can you make weapons? Can you make so weapons it, out of the dragon scales? Uh, there is no benefit from making a weapon out of okay. dragon scales. Like teeth or something like okay. that, which I didn't have time to harvest, unfortunately. All right. So, so I'm. Are, are we uh, at least have a deal with this for now? That is. I will more take than both. I will take both sets of dragon scale off your hands yes. for the moment, and in, indeed, and it's going to take me, unfortunately, because I'm tied. Not unfortunately, but. Because I'm tied up with your companion's work, I will not be able to start. It only takes me a couple of days with the person I work with, which is very nice. Um, so I could have your white scale armor ready. Um, let's just say on the 26th. Take your time, Grizzle. I already have a set. Miss Hanin, guide your way. And I will leave on that. Once again, what a wonderful morning to start with. I thought that my... My ID was so excellent, but this was making my day. But then your return has made my day even brighter. That is what a light cleric does. Excellent. I will speak to you later then. And he lets you all go. And uh, he is off. Um, head to the Golden Camel, I think. All right. Let's move you guys to the Golden Camel. Um, you could definitely use a very nice breakfast. Or maybe it's at lunch. Or 11. Any, any oh, food. Maybe. So you guys return to the you guys return to the golden camel. And a warm hot tea or something. Um, El Hess is there, happy to greet you guys. Rum. Uh, Welcome back, Sahids. What can I? What can we have? uh, What can we prepare for you? What can Mamoun prepare for you? The grandest of breakfasts with a wondrous warm beverage with some kind of alcohol. Um, Ah, most excellent, dude. Hitmonk. We will prepare for you um, and get a meal preparing for you. I have had no messages for you as of this moment today to pass along. Um, so, and everything seems to be going well. We have not had any um, strange visitors or any other visitors of the like. I put one um, of that. I spent 10 minutes pushing that, putting that up, by the way. We've been gone for a day. You spent, uh, oh, 10 minutes doing that? Sure. Yeah. Um, all right. So the rest of the, unless you guys are doing anything, just resting there in the day. It comes to dinner time. So you've had uh, this was actually um, what time did I say you guys? You guys got back. Oh, you got back right around ten o'clock. Because that's when it was. So you guys have your late breakfast. Um, if you want to do anything with your day, um, I know some of you do some have some off things going. You could do that, or if you want to rest this day and start that the next day, that's fine too. I'm going to transcribe, and then I'm heading down to go see um, Jalila. Um, I would like so are to you gonna, so you're going to visit her today? Uh, I'm gonna, this evening, I'm going to visit her. And okay. I'm bringing a big bag of holding with stuff in the park. All right. So you're going to go, you're going down to the um, one of the unfortunate sec- uh, sections of the lower city, it's called the lower city to see Jalila. Um, you could track her down pretty easy. She's out and about with the people, um, spreading goodwill, singing, trying to uh, raise morale. Um, that is Aurelius. Uh, let's see. What, Nam, what are you going to be doing? Um, I'm going to be sending these messages that I'm just putting in the chat, um, one a day using my sending stone to the ways. So you're sending, just put me the one that you just sent right now. I'll, I'll do the, the one that says first is the one I'm sending, uh, first and, uh, but I'm not going to do a lot of exploring and trying to acquire that tower today. Cause I'm too, too tired from that big. Place. Okay. So you're sending a message this day about the shadow realm drawing club. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, all right, that is Nam. Um, Cal, what are you doing this day? Uh, I will be going to check in with my people. So I can mark this. Are you going to spend the eight hours training the rest of the day? Yes. Okay. That's a Cal day. Uh, Drell, what are you doing? I'd like to make a case for um, me trying to read the book. Anybody have any objections? I'm gonna. I, mean, I, I will help you. I'm re, I'm in the room, so if you want to do it, I'll help you. But I don't think you need my help. Uh, yeah, I, I you should you should be able to read. So okay, I know I can read. I'm He's not worried about bad. actually reading it. He wants to make sure everybody's cool with him having the book. Oh, oh yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll right. translate. Okay, I'm you. helping you read it. You should turn the page. Try this. I don't hear anybody yelling with you, Cal. Is does, does do you give him the yes, book? Yes, I give him the book. All right. <laughs> oh well, thank you very much. My I mean, friend. he could take it off your corpse. So. 
That's um, true. <laughs> it, would take a, it would take a whole round to do that, though. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go one, out here in the, fountain, near the fountain, one. and I'm going to start reading. You're going to start doing the exercise in it. All right. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I'm going to. I'm going Girl, to. You owe me a tome you. when we find one. The way this I, is going to work. So next book we find, it's all for you. It's going to be uh, desert tribe romantic poetry, but you'll love it. <laughs> you see spot run. <laughs> um. So, Craig, uh, Craig, the way this is yes. going to work is we're going. I'll tell you how many hours you complete, and you just need to keep track of them. And um yes. and make sure that keep track of the days too. So because you have yeah. to finish it within six days. So gotcha. Um, but you can spend um so it was 10 o'clock, it was uh 10 o'clock you had your breakfast. Let's say it's 11 o'clock. So you start training at 11. Yeah. Is anybody doing is it, who is around at the golden camel at like six o'clock at night? Sam's pretty much there all day except for the sending bit, which just does from Cal me. is probably oh. gone if he's doing his eight hours of training. Well, when he might be coming at sunset. Cal, yeah. are you coming? I'm sorry, uh, Azrael, I never asked you what you're doing, so I apologize. That's I, I was gonna say, I was gonna wait till the sunset. Uh, once the moon is uh, up, I was gonna go to the lunar temple and okay. uh, give them a ton of money. So, okay, all right, so I would do I would do that with like, like, I don't know, sun probably rises like eight, so it's desert. I yeah, it's late. It's like eight o'clock okay. at night, eight eight thirty nine. Um, okay. probably eight thirty. Um, Cal. Yeah. When? How long were you going to stay after your eight hours, or are you only going for eight hours? Um, I think I'll just do the training, and I'm going to come back. Okay. And I'm going to give them. I'm going to give them my silver. Okay. So we'll figure those the money part out a- outside yeah. of the okay. actual playing. Um, so I'll get that from you between the in between the week. Um, but I do know you're giving money. So that's that'll help your factions out. Um, mm-hmm. So the different factions that you associate with and your training, you're working with disciples of the DAC away, which is your last name, not the website. Um, it just happens to be similar. Um, and so the um, so there you got those guys training under that. Uh, Azrael is hanging out in uh, waiting for the moon to do his business because that's when he's they're at their strongest. Um, There's also a dog. Yeah. So you do your business at night, right? Yeah, um, that's true. <laughs> So I bring that evening. I'm not there at six. I bring food. I do my business on the carpet. <laughs> I bring a uh, beetle down, loaded lady down, oh, food, and I'm going to distribute all the silver and all the copper that I have to all the people that are there. Okay. I'll, once again, I'll get that from you um, um, later in the week or after, Fine. so yeah. that we don't burden ourselves with that. But I will. Um, so you're so you're gone at six o'clock. So you're not here. Yeah. So we'll just put. Um, I'm going to put you in the bedroom for now. Um, so at six, around six o'clock at dinner time. So El Hess is starting to serve you guys. Nam, you were just hanging out for the day. Yeah. Um, uh, Cal, you're just coming back in. And yep. um, so we'll put you um, kind of passing Drell here. And El Hess is, passes you guys. And she says, uh, Sahid, it seems uh, somebody is here to see you. And you never know how she knows these things, but she goes to the... Um, the door here and um she lets in this individual who comes seems to have somehow entered up ended up in the uh, already in the llama room um and nam if you want to be out in the uh open courtyard too in this wonderful day you can be as well all right maybe i'm out there um it's you guys could all be just staring at drill while he does his exercise yeah i'm like trying to like shield the book (laughs) <laughs> I've got like, all these really embarrassing, like awkward exercises so, um, I have to do. <laughs> so what you guys, really are, you guys are doing, you're kind of hanging out, just ch- chatting, uh, talking, uh, <laughs> shooting the shooting the shit. And um, Salusa, uh, uh, El Hess opens the door and she's like, ah, mistress. And um, she's met Salusa before. So Salusa comes strolling in, who is. Uh, um, so Salusa is a moon elf. Um She's got kind of a pixie kind of cut. Um, she's light blue of skin. She dresses in uh, well-fitting um, black leathers, uh, complemented by like purple sash and cloak. Um, and she just kind of, she's got knives in various places, boots, hips, those kinds of things. Um, she comes uh, strolling in. Here's a picture of her again. And um, she bears the, on her left exposed shoulder, she has the, uh, bears the tattoo of the lupine which is um, Cal's gang um, or the gang that he's associated with. And um, she comes walking in and she's like, she's like, ah, L, how you doing? She's like, Hey, can you hook me up with that wine? You know, I like, 
And Ella's like, absolutely. And she um, wanders off here and she comes over here, um, walks over to and uh, sits down on the edge of the fountain in the center of your courtyard, um, the ivory fountain, you know, the clear blue water pouring out of it. And she's kind of waving her finger back and forth. And she's like, she addresses you all. Um, so this is the evening of the uh, 22nd, right? Yes. Um, and uh, she um, she says, hey, she's like, uh, gets up for a second. She's like, she looks at Cal because that's the closest person. And she's like, Cal, and just kind of gives him like a cold up and down look. And then she walks by him and she tussles your hair, Nam, kisses you on the forehead. And she goes, I trust my you're little... feeling better. Have you she goes, there's my... Oh, absolutely. That is my little protector. Um, she <laughs> said, she looks at Drell and she's like, sees him in a workout. And she just kind of like, hmm, just looks him up and down and passes on. And then she goes, AZ, and she addresses uh, uh, as, and she uh, still wearing that mask, I see. And then she plops We're down like there here. Um, what's that? I said, you are not there yet. No, I oh, was oh I see what you're saying. She doesn't seem to catch on to that because I didn't. Um, so she's like, yeah. Um, and she's like, uh, so I was actually looking for Aurelius. Um, I have some information. Kind of, he kind of hires me a la carte, but so does Az. So uh, I was uh, thinking that perhaps I could pass that information on to you. Would you be interested in some inter- information? Give it to me, I'll get it to him. Most excellent. So first thing on the agenda is he and you had asked me to reach out to Galuma, who is, uh, you know, was the um, yeah. warehouse foreman of uh, one of the warehouses you took out and you were kind enough to leave her alive. Um, so she is d- indeed interested in a parlay. Um, sh- if you name the time, she'll pick a place. Um, sadly, uh, she's most likely going to pick the sewers. Uh, I could not convince her that the aqueduct is a much nicer place and a much less smelly place to me. She feels more comfortable in the sewers. Um, as far as your boys, Ravar and Aham, the were tigers, they are interested in meeting too, but they would prefer to wait to see how things play out with Yurnev. You know, Yurnev is the, I'm just repeating these for people who don't remember and maybe people are listening. Yurnev is the uh, lord of and the head of Maelstrom, which is a black market group, which you guys struck out out and wiped out. Um, there are three primary warehouses and took most of their um, the their goods and most of their reserve, ca- if not all of their reserve cash from the vault that was guarded by the black one um, or the dark one. I'm sorry. Um, and um she is um so she's like says and this so they're they're kind of not really in a hurry they want to see how things play out but they are interested lastly out of the wares um it seems captain raslow used to be first mate captain until you guys did your work your magic on the gluttony and took out their captain so now she is the captain of the gluttony which i think i've mentioned before but she her vessel is still sitting off the eastern coast and she apparently is waiting for orders from um, Yurnev and hasn't received them yet. And so she too is kind of waiting for things to play out, it seems, from my me- from my sources. So she may be uh, susceptible or open to a parlay as well, if you guys are interested in dealing with that. Um, and uh, and she knows who she's dealing with So from the sources. So Eve, she may not have that much bad blood, even though uh, you slaughtered most of her crew, if not all of them, and uh, her captain. Well, uh, so just, I should hope not. <laughs> yeah, so that's the thing. Um, and uh, lastly, Phil Aguirre is going to be reaching out to you guys tonight. Um, so she has the location of your net. They know where he's holding up. Um, and he's the last piece of that puzzle to, to really take down Maelstrom. She'll give you the specifics. Um, she's supposed to be reaching out to you later today. I think she wants to meet this evening. I don't know what you guys' plans are. Um, and um, and she's, you know, and she'll fill you in what they know about it and when she wants to move on it. That's not my business. But um, there is one thing I don't think she's going to share with you, but I kind of owe you guys. And some of you know, there's some of you that are been paying me some coins. So I'm going to pass this little piece on to you. Um, there's something. Um, all the wares can't figure out why your Nev is hiding. This has not really been his style. Um, some of the more veterans amongst his lieutenants su- are suggesting his actions have been off over the last couple of years. So he hasn't really been himself for years now. 
Um, and they're not, I'm not sure what all this means, but it just stinks. Something about this whole thing stinks. And I thought it was best if I could you know, pass on what little information I have about it. I agree it's little, but just to give you the slightest thing that something's not right about this whole held up in his stronghold situation. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really it. And uh, but at this point, El Hess has come out with um, she actually brought our d'oeuvres to and a glass of um, of red wine. And she takes the wine and shoots it back. Unlike you're supposed to drink wine and pops back a few uh, fruit type appetizers and then finds the meat ones and consumes even more of those while she's watching you guys. So there's this little awkward silence unless one of you wants to say something while she just mounches on your food and drinks. Your try drink. the green ones. They're particularly good. She flips one of those back and she says, uh, so um, is it worth anything to you, Az? Uh, I give a second, give a glance. Well, best I can glance through a mask. Uh, I give her one nod say, that's perfect. Uh, when would Phil Gear want to meet? When would who want to meet? When would Phil Gear want to meet? You gave me... You oh, Phil Gear. Oh, Phil Gear's going to reach... Anyway. Yeah, yeah, I don't have that info. She's going to reach... You know, she's got that... And she tags uh, at her ear she's going to reach out to you and let you know when she wants to meet may not be here i'm going to write down whatever i i have for auric Aurelius. I, I don't really know which name is actual one yet he hasn't told me he's looking uh, for more money is what she's looking for yeah, well, then that's when i was i was getting there oh, yeah. i was oh, getting something, there something. you know for the truck i was gonna say because you've done great i'm going to give her because i also have less of a concept of money i'm going to give her a let me give her two platinum pieces. She like, uh, do you hand them to her or toss them to her? I I go over, still staring dead at her, and I just I uh, have her palm. And I just put her in palm, palm on palm, push her back to her. She um she back. takes it, slides it into a pouch, and um she winks at you before you turn away, and she's like, she goes much appreciated, you know. And she, as she says it, she goes, you know, a girl's got to eat, and she just grabs a whole handful. Of um, this dried meat they have on there it looks like it's maybe chicken. And I'm she just sure stuffs, you find a way. She stuffs it un un um, um un uh, ceremoniously and, and like just uncouthly, I guess is the word I was really looking for. Into her mouth, starts chawing. She says, throws you up the peace sign kind of thing, and says, "Later, gentlemen." Through uh, it with a mouthful of food, and starts headed toward the door. Unless somebody stops her, nope. and she exits. Um. So that was around dinner time. Um, right. About an hour later, I think everybody's still there except, except for um, as it's about to take off. About I'm an about hour later, off. Nam, you get ascending. Are you there, Nam? I'm here. The first 10 words of the sending, you probably don't want to repeat. All right. They're kind of private. And then she says, um, after those 10 words, she says, um, need to meet tonight. Um, know where your neb is. Okay. We well, got an X-ray descending. Good, doing your bonus. That was through she, my. He fits no, in there. The I earpiece. think she fits in there. You know where to find me. This is the fill gear sending, not the way he's sending. Because I also no, no. This is fill gear. Yeah. Um, this fill gear reaching out through your uh, Drugar ear cuff that you wear, right, right, right. and she, you basically know that she's at the. Um, what time did she say? She just said tonight. Um, she didn't give you a time, but you know that she pretty much when she's not doing her business, she pretty much lives at uh, at the um, Stout Brewery. Um, and, you know, that's where you meet her all the time for all your other uh, events. So what time um, does she normally like to meet because I got to go get my cloak. Usually, um, you, well, the, the cloak is tomorrow. Oh, is it? OK, then. We night, yep. And at nine o'clock and she, you, you guys have met her at midnight before and, okay. and, and, and 11 o'clock at night. So I'll wait till the rest of the crew gets back and share this a little bit. of. All right. So, um, eight o'clock rolls around and, uh, as you take off, right. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to leave a note for, uh, Aurelius. I'm going to write down everything I was told, uh, which if you need any of that jail, I also, I took the notes just in case. So, um, and then I'll take off. All right. And, and Aurelius, when are you coming back? Uh, we'd have dinner, distribute money, so I'd probably be there from like four until like nine. So you'll be back at the you'll be back at the Golden Camel at nine. Yeah, so I figured I'd get get back before it gets okay. too late, and uh, um, I want to make sure. And the money I'm distributing is to the you know anybody. That, it's not just to like here. Here's all my money. It's kind of like here, you know, take it out. Like anybody that needs food, uh, right? Well, we'll, we'll um, 
I'll have you guys give me details of, of who and what you're giving the money to, like in text, yeah. and then I can work it all out. Okay. And we'll, I'll actually, we'll kind of roll up and see how your uh, visit with Jalila went to uh, in between sessions. Right. Um, so that brings us to, um, uh, are you back at Azrael at nine o'clock? Nine o'clock, I'm back back at the Golden Camel. Um, me, you only uh, left at eight, so probably not. I probably not because I probably okay. got down there. I probably would talk about. All right, things. so Nam, as, going. okay, so Nam, um, Aurelius comes back at nine o'clock. Are you going to say anything at that point? Or are you still waiting? I'll tell Aurelius what we know. Okay, Phil Gear, and and you left and you left the note for him, right? Um, as I did in his room. All right, so you get you that you can find that information yeah. too. Um, are you guys going to wait for As to come back at some point? Or are you guys just going to go see if Phil? As Phil gets back at a reasonable hour. If it gets closer to midnight, we'll go with them. All right, As, what I time think, do you get back? I would probably be back around 10, 10.30. All right, so As comes back at 10. Are you guys headed to the Stout Brewery together? Yep. So, As, we got to go get some drinks and meet up with Phil Gear. Everybody's good with that? All right, moving along to the Stout Brewery. Um, all right. You guys arrive at the Stout Brewery, um, and once again, it's the same old people in the Stout. This is the tiniest little tavern slash inn in the world. It's got uh, four long tables with these giant, heavy um, metal chandeliers with candles, basically. Most of it's candle lit, except for the fireplace also, which the fireplace isn't really, it's going barely because it's so damn hot and they're in, the, in Kassan anyway. Um, you can mosey up to the bar where they have the... Uh, darkest um ale you've ever seen it's the underdark ale basically um very potent very strong but you guys are starting to grow uh get a those of you who have been drinking which i think is all of you um are starting to get a uh custom to it and um being able to handle it even better um again the place never seems to have people in here that aren't associates of fill gear so it's really more of like a private club but you think at this point than an actual tavern that people visit um although you guys come here late at night often too so but once you guys arrive, which is late, um, the door's open. One of her associates lets you in, and they lock the door behind you. But you've seen this move before, too, and it doesn't mean they're going to jump you. Not yet, anyway. Um, and so uh, you guys take your spots at the bar, I assume, because most of the tables are usually have other people at it. And also because Phil Aguirre likes to serve from the bar. And she's like, hey, how we doing, everybody? Good to see you guys again. And she starts lining everybody up with a uh, ale, whether they ask for it or not. She brings out a plate of, uh, even though you guys have eaten some of the finest food in Kassan, in just in your your super sweet hotel, um, she hands out a plate of a sad looking attempt at a charcuterie board, which is basically a loaf of bread, a couple of chunks of cheese, and a, a couple of different varieties, and um, some dried meat, um, but nothing mm -hmm. fancy. She throws it up there in case anybody's hungry, she tosses it down. She's like, yeah, so... Um, so I'm assuming Salusa told you uh, at least, you know, that I need to speak to you. I don't know what else she told you. Um, you know, that he look, she looks over at Cal because he's part of the same gang. And she goes, yeah, sometimes that girl, I don't know about her. Um, but she's good at what she does. So um, can't complain too much. And, uh, you know, she's got reasonable prices. Um, but anyway, so here's the deal. We've, we've we found your nav. We knew he was going to be hang, holding up somewhere. At least that was the hope. And, or, I mean, if he had just fled town, that would even be better. But that's not the case. Um, he is hunkered down in the uh, lower level of one of his, uh, well, one of his less known warehouses. Like, we didn't even know it was his until Seleucia and some of the others found it. Um, he's in the other warehouse district. So he's in the southern warehouse district. I can show you on this map here. So she pulls out a map she had ready to show you guys. So it's... I'm going to move you guys to the map of Kassan real quick. Um, so we are looking at now a map of the capital of Kassan. i going to zoom in here. It only starts from so far out. And um, so if you go down into what we call the southern wing, so the southern, um, so all the yellow buildings are your warehouse buildings, and you did all your business in the northern um, wing or the northern warehouse division. But if you go down to the south and you zoom in real close, You'll see where I'm pinging here is it says stronghold. So it's this building area or this set of buildings right on the waterfront. It doesn't look like it's white on the water, waterfront there, but it literally is just like the other couple of warehouses you dealt with is literally sitting partly on the water. Um, so she's, uh, she says, so this, this building, um, 
it doesn't, if once you, when you look at it from the outside, um, it doesn't look overly guarded. It has about a half a dozen plain clothes um, city guard. So the Sultan gave him some help, but it's not a, not, not a really formidable, and they're not even wearing the Sultan's colors. So you're not even getting that advantage of having, you know, people stay away because they don't want to mess with the Sultan's people because then they're messing with the Sultan. So I think it's like a token offering. So I think the damage that you guys did might have already affected uh, good old uh, Yernev's standing, but at least he's got the token guys. Then I hear, my understanding is what's left of the wares that are um, loyal to him. They've uh, staked out the place to, to set up some sort of, sort of protection for him. And there's this other uh, thing we were able to pick up. So he always had an affinity for visiting, visiting the gladiator arena. Um, the one over um, that's to the uh, uh, east of us. He, um, he spent a lot of time there and uh, had a big interest. At one point, the, um, the Rakshasa in their slave trade, they brought in uh, these, they're not bears, I mean, not wares, they're called bear folk. They come from somewhere up north in the Zormov kingdom area. Um, and, uh, but they got a whole bunch of them at one point, and they're really fierce fighters. Um, and so they found their way into the gladiator in, and he's been slowly, uh, so the word is he's got a liking to these guys and he slowly tries to buy them off, especially as if they're close to the end of the career and put them on his, his, uh, private guard. So there's probably a, a den of those guys down there too. Um, so you might be dealing with that. So the thought is that you guys go in there probably at night would be the best thing, just so you don't attract any, um, uh, make any obvious doesn't look like the Sultan is totally backing them. So he might ignore them anyway, but I wouldn't do it daytime. You guys hit there at night, just like you did the warehouses. Go in there, see what you can find, see if you can find Yerniv and, and cut the head off the snake and this thing. And then we're one, one step closer to uh, you guys finishing your deal with the Duchess and, uh, and also getting, uh, you know, taking a whack at the Sultan's power, getting, uh, you know, doing whatever you guys want to do as the chosen. We're doing that guy now, say about when, when are we doing that tonight? Tomorrow? When do we want to show? Us well, tonight? I feel like the sooner the better, but uh, I mean, I don't think he's going anywhere. Um, I wouldn't wait too many days, but uh, you know, I like I said, most of his resources are tapped. Um, so I just, you know, you might want to make a statement, but I, it doesn't have to be night. I mean, and I, I, you know, she starts okay. to get she's about to say, Well, I know you guys. I mean, well, you know, whatever. You guys probably been up to stuff, so. Are we adverse you know. to going now? What's that? Uh, what what night of the moon is it? Um, we are, sir, are. Um, Close to new moon? No. Uh, you are. This is two days out from the full moon. The other oh. side. So it's, it's almost it's almost Sahanine's time. Well, the full they, moon, the full moon is on the 24th. They're on the 26th. Embrace the Raven Queen. So they shifted better during the new moon. So this should be their weaker point of shifting. So it's a good time. It's like, I don't know anything about that, but hey, whatever. Dude, if that works for you with Sahanin and all your business with her, that's great. I brought my favorite gun, Drill. <laughs> so you guys are thinking about even going tonight? Well, don't we, we want to... Don't we want to do a little scouting first? I, yeah, I want to. I, I kind of got swept up in this. I wasn't going to go with them. I'm still reading. Oh, you didn't You didn't go? No, I'm practicing my stuff. You only right. do eight hours a day, I think, is, is how it's set up, right? Or how does it work? You, well, have to, you can only do eight hours a day? No, it, it doesn't. No, it says it says you have to do 48 hours within six days. Oh, he's going but you on can't, yeah. but you, ha- you can't, you obviously wouldn't learn anything from it if you don't do a long rest. So I you basically, scout, Joe. yeah, um, you can reread it, but I'm pretty sure that's what it says. Yeah, yeah, to reread I, it, I think it's have one day to scout. I think it's eight Your days. Cloaks to coming or tomorrow, day. right, Nam? Yes, correct. Yeah. So we at least should get that as well. Maybe I've really hard for it. It could be helpful. I agree. Why don't we do, why don't we scout? Uh, it's already midnight now, right? So we can either scout yeah. tonight or we can uh, mm-hmm. go out, scout, do some scouting during the day, maybe a little bit tomorrow, and then uh, get my cloak uh, and maybe we hit him tomorrow night. That would be, yeah, I would like a little bit of preparation. Yeah, I'm also, if it's stone, I can make a nice little back door. We don't have to go through the main entrance. All right. I'm not very quiet. Just real quick um, to clear something up. I'm, I'm going to rule this differently. I, I misread it. So basically, 
it's not that it's not. So you have to spend, um, it does take you six days, eight hours a day. And, but you, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you get interrupted. I thought it, so it's once you complete it, you get it. So you can take time off in between those eight hours. Yeah. It's, okay. it's six, it's eight hours a day for six days. And when you're done right. that period of time, then you get the benefits. Right. But you could, I'm saying you could split up. I wouldn't take a huge periods of time, but if you took off like a day in between or whatever, I don't think that would be an issue. Okay. All right. It's like writing spells. When I do spells, I say I can only do it for eight hours a day. Now, granted, maybe we could do 12 or 16. So we're supposed to be eating and resting in between. Now, this, this right. is the fifth edition. These are just old school editions. So if John wants to rule differently, but I would no, say- No, no, I, I, I misread it. Um, so so you if you've already completed your eight hours a day, that you still don't have to be in this conversation if you don't want, um, Joe. Well, no, but do I not? do If I don't benefit from the hours I do beyond eight, then I wouldn't do it. Yeah, you would have been done at six o'clock. So, and I can't, and I don't get any benefit from doing it beyond that. No. Yeah, then I've, then I'm, yes, I'm with everyone. So it does, it does have to be over six. I misread it. I thought, okay. it, yeah. So it's, yeah. So it's so eight you basically hours. Have to, yeah, you basically have to spend eight, eight hours for six days to be done with it. But I'm, I'm ruling. So it's not as cool as what I said, but the coolest part is you can interrupt it, which I was. Basically, you you would have before I was limiting it. You had to be done within six days. Yeah, but it's over six days. So gotcha. Um. So all right. So you are there now. Yes. So all right. Probably, That's yes. all right. After cleaning that mess up. So that all being cleaned up. So now Drell is there. So what is the decision? Uh, what, what was the plan that you guys came up with? Want to go tomorrow night? Then we're scouting. We're scouting during the day tomorrow. Those of us who can be subtle, <laughs> and then we'll uh, we'll go tomorrow night. What time? Sounds good. What time tomorrow night? Uh, I leave that to the moon, man. I mean, you have to pick up your armor set, isn't it? Is it tomorrow? The armor's like done at nine the... o'clock, I think we said eight or nine. Nine o'clock at night or nine o'clock yeah. during the day? N- night, night, night. So why don't we aim for like nine after nine ten? So that give it an hour. But you, oh, you have to attune to it as well. So give I got to attune, so I won't have so it. So ten, ten thirty. In that case, that give you a, a short rest to it. Him. Well, it takes a long rest to attune. It does. I thought you could do it. In yeah. No yeah, long rest. You have the uh, long rest. Crap. That's annoying. All right. So we won't have it. That's okay. We can go tomorrow night. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We can still. We still should do it within. We shouldn't wait another day after. Especially if he's acting skittish. So you're planning on going the night of the twenty third, which is tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Oh, indeed. Tomorrow night. So prepare your prepare your spells. Be ready to go. Be going at midnight. Storm the place. Take it out. We'll scout this. Uh, we can scout tomorrow. Just want uh, to send the eyeball. I could do the eyeball, or you guys could scout. What would you rather do? I don't mind scouting. I am not a scout. I will scout with the gnome. I scout from my living room. Okay. So, um, um, do you guys spend any more time there, or just head out, or? Well, hang out. I'll have a few drinks. Hang out a little bit. Have a few more drinks. Yeah. So. Yeah. Life. Um. I'll spend uh, I don't drink, but I'll hang out. Philagir is going to drag Nam Foodle off at one point or another. Yeah, we'll have a little fun. And then uh, she comes back later and joins you. Um, and you guys can stay as late as you want, head back whenever you want. Um, you don't seem to be, there was an initial worry about you going back and forth between the Stout Brewery and the Sultan watching, but it seems like it's not an issue at the moment. Um, so you guys make it back whenever you head back to the Camel, no problem. So we'll move on to the next day, which is now, we are now on the 23rd. Um, and uh, when do you think, um, oh, by the way, this is the day that Continual Flame Scroll is ready for you if you want to pick it up, um, Aurelius? This is the, what was that? There was a Continual Scroll, a Continual Flame Scroll that, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, let's pick that one up. That, awesome. in, that in Drizzle was trying to get for you? Yep, yep, I want that. Um, I think I already gave you the price, right? Yeah, you tell you, uh, okay. remind me again. I wrote it down here. But... All right, I'll look it up real quick. I got it. I got it right here. Uh, what level is it? Uh, is level Second? two? Level two. I think it's one fifty or something like that. Uh, but I could be. Uh, or it's either one fifty. It was five hundred. Three fifty. Three fifty. Three fifty. Yeah, because it's yeah. to, to, to transcribe was a hundred and then fifty to cast. So it was five hundred. Yeah. Yeah. So three fifty. Yeah, um, so you can pick that up. Um. Yeah. I'm going to spend, I'm going to make my, that would have to be, that would have to be 10 o'clock in the morning. What time are, cause he doesn't open until that. What time are you guys scouting? Um, Nam and, uh, Cal. 
I'll go out um, at first light, like round shift, normal shift change. How's that? All right. So like eight ish or something. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm going to put all of you on this map so everybody can see this. Um, I'm going to put you on a map instead of drawing all the stuff like we did last time, because I have a, I think it's designed in such a way that you can actually, well, maybe not, but we'll try it out. Um, let's see. Here. Um, all right. So I'll just move, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use, I know what I'm going to do. So save you, save me from putting a bunch of minis on here. I'm going to use my, I'm going to use my famous eyeball token. There you go. This will allow, should allow all of you to see. Um, I think it only sees with regular light, but I'm going to change moonlight on this. So, All right, let's see if this works. And then I got to move you guys. This works. Uh, all right. So a movie there. Might give me a second to get this eyeball working. All good. But all right. Um, so you guys are probably just seeing a dark screen right now, right? Oh no, you can see it. Uh, I see okay. some light. For some reason I can't see it, but you guys can see it, which is cool. I oh, now I can see stuff. it. All right. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna move this around as you. So um, and I'm gonna change it. So you guys are there during the day too, right? Yeah. So what I'm, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this map to daylight, which will make it, everything a lot easier to see. If there's some nearby need, rooms we can get to or anything, or we'll do that. I'm going to need, yeah, you're going to be on top of roofs. I'm going to need some stealth rolls from you and some insight. So give me stealth rolls, insight rolls, and perception rolls. And, um, or stealth, insight, stealth perception, uh, then insight. Just name it, just name and, um, and Cal. Okay. Good. I think they're the only people going. Yeah. Uh, stealth was not my strongest roll. I rolled a two natural. So with my modifier, it's the six. Oh, you mean this gnome? <laughs> I, I, I go to nonchalant mode. All right. So it is daylight. I'm far away from Rudd. <laughs> so unfortunately, the way this dynamic lighting works is these walls you would be behind go all the way to the ceiling, which is exactly true. So what I'm going to do is move you. Um, I'm going to move this around so you can see things and explain it to you as you see it. So this is a warehouse with an outer wall. So like if you see, if you pass over here, you can see there's just a wall um, where I place this down. So it's like a courtyard, not a roofed area here where you're seeing right now. And you're looking through the windows into the, uh, so we'll show you what you see in those windows. Um, so um, these are the plainclothes guards here. I don't see where I am here. You're not on the map. There's just an eyeball. Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah, I didn't put your miniatures on the map because you're ideally we're not. You're not running around, but that may change. Um, so, so the eyeball, so everybody can see, so all, all the players can see, and anybody else that's seeing through the eyeball. So, um, all right. So outside, um, I'll show you a picture. These are the uh, warehouse guards that you're seeing. They're dressed in uh, plain clothes. Um, carrying shields and scimitars. They got wraps that kind of cover up their faces. Uh, but according to Phil Gear, these are actually city guard that are dressed up. Um, but they are kind of semi-uniformly dressed, even though they're not dressed in the purple and gold that are the colors of um, Kassan. And they're not wearing the, um, the emblem of Kassan, which, which is the you know diamond, kind of the crown over it. They're not wearing that on their shields either. Um, so... Um, that's what they look like. And so that's what you see outside. Let me check real quick what they're, so you got a six. It's not impressive. No, oh. not really. I'm just going to be very nonchalant. I'm going to, I'm going to be far away from them. <laughs> All right. From, watch it from a distance. <laughs> well, I'm going to, I'm bringing you in basically on this corner. So you can move up to this part with no big problem. There is some 
there, it, there is an advantage that you're in the day. So there's traffic on these streets, even though I don't have miniatures for all the people mm-hmm. that are going. I roll with advantage? Because you said the word advantage, so. Uh, yeah, go. You can roll with advantage. Um, yeah, my second stealth roll. Just yeah, if you roll a two again, I'm I'm uh, I'm keeping I'm 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 up on the rooftop. That's better. Twenty one. Uh... I I had a bad step, but then I right. slipped into the crowd like Assassin's Creed. Style. Um, well, you you can both be up on the because Nam could either climb up on the roof. He's got really good acrobatics. So I'm just assuming your guys are together. Um, unless you you really want to split up, you can. Um, but you're gonna see the same things I assume casing the joint. So I'm just kind of okay. showing you. It's just like when I did it before in writing. Now I'm just showing you on the map. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, your collective scouting. We're not. It, I'm not doing miniature moving for each scouting movement. Um, okay. Unless you guys want to try to get inside, and then I'll break out miniatures if you want to get inside the grounds. But I'm moving you. I'm going to move the eyeball inside of this just because the way I have these walls set up. So inside the courtyard is a bunch of. You can see there. It's a um, stone courtyard with an iron gate, um, like a spiked iron, wrought iron gate that is here and. Um, so there's a guard that seems to be standing at the gate most of the time inside some cargo, some crates. Doesn't look like there's anybody working here, though, any like just uh, dock uh, stock workers or dock workers. You can see right over here to the left or the uh, west. There, this is actually the water line and there's actually boats. That's actually Does this the dock guy right here that I can see through the window look particularly interesting. So those are. Um, yes. So those are actually um, poor. Uh, those are wear rats that are patrolling around. Oh. So they look like this. Um, and they do seem to be in rat form, which is kind of interesting. Um, but they look, um, I'm calling them wear rat thugs. So they're dressed in like, oops, they're dressed in like leathers, have uh, hand crossbows and short swords. You guys, they're very similar to the ones you fought in, um, in, G- in Gulema's warehouse, the, you know, the dark ones warehouse that were up top. Um, so they look very much like that. They're pretty nimble on their feet. Um, they move around pretty quietly. But these two ones don't seem to be hiding too much. You can also see, I think, anyone with the red circles you're seeing, those are the similar um, creatures, and they're moving around. The ones in um, in this tower over here that you can see through the window, they're playing cards. This is a door that you can see that goes to that tower. Um, you do see through the window, I think, especially you could probably clock it when you're on this roof over here. But again, these walls I have are kind of set up poorly. Um, but yeah, so let's see if you were here, you could act. So yeah, so if you're up on top of that roof, I'm going to put you here. You can see through that window, there's a stairwell going down, mm. a spiral staircase going down, a stone staircase that descends in the middle of that tower. So um, that goes to a lower level, which was mentioned by Salusa, um, is where he may, they may be hunkering down. See more inside, right in there. Yeah, inside through the windows that you can see, you don't really have to get super cool. Oh, did you guys give me perception checks? I need those. Uh, perception check coming at it. And then if you want to throw insight ones too. Um, Not great on the perception, 12. Well, let's do this. Whoever has the highest, uh, this is the way I did it when I did it for you guys. So we'll take, let's take uh, <coughs> plus fours. So Greg, roll, roll another perception with advantage to see if you get better than 20. And insight, you guys are basically working together. Whoever's the highest insight, roll it with advantage because the other person's helping you. Basically. So Greg, your final best roll is a 23 for perception. So that's good. Um, Nam, roll a second. In actually, uh, Cal probably has better insight too. What's your insight, Cal? My insight so far is a thirteen. What's your plus on your insight, Cal? Greg, that's you. You're muted. We can't hear you. Uh, seven. Sorry. Oh, it's seven. Yeah. So roll with roll with advantage. Nam's basically here to help you out. Right. Moral support, such as it is. Right. So all right, so twenty. So you have a pretty good in, uh, idea of what's going on here. And you basically are seeing everything and discussing it with Nam. Um, so you guys know exactly what's going on. I'll move you around to the other side in a second. So you get the idea that there's about six guards patrolling this place um, on the outside. Those are the city watch and hiding. You've seen, um, so far you've seen four um, were rats in, at different points within the warehouse. Um, and then when we go, if you go around, we'll, I'll bring you around to the other side. Um, oh, that's the wrong thing. I moved the guard. Not you. Um, so down here in the front, just as you can see here, if uh, you can see that this is the waterfront. There's a crane right here. Um, there's another way you could get in here up the steps as opposed to the gate if you wanted to come through the water. Um, on the other side here. Oops. Wow, now you're looking down the northern wall. 
So again, all this whole place is stone with a um, heavy tiled roof. Um, and it's about as high as the other warehouses. So you're looking about 20 to 30 feet high. There's another two guards on this side. Again, you can come up the waterway. There's a door, two doors on this side. There's bigger doors and windows facing the waterfront. There's one giant door and a couple big windows. Um, you can peer moving around there. You guys can, so you can see in there and drop. You guys can get shots hey, in the window. John, looking at the water, is there any, any sign that there's a way to get under the water in there maybe? Um, with that perception check, there looks like there looks the water looks like it flows underneath, but it looks like you'd have to go into the water to get um, into any. There's no obvious or unobvious with that role openings that um, that take you, but there definitely seems to be, seems to be some sort of connection. Um, it just based on the way this is built. With they also with that insight check, it doesn't look like. Um, it looks like there's some sort of water flow under there. And, and you've dealt with that with the um, with the one warehouse that you could come up underneath. So it wouldn't shock you if there's a way to get in there somehow. And then, Cal, can you fly up and see if there's any, like, skylights or anything from the roof? Or would you get in from the top? Um, yeah, there's no particular skylights, just like the other warehouses. They don't seem – they're all, like, these kind of roofs that I have your eyes sitting on right now. They're pretty solid roofs. Um, if you could turn into, like, a gaseous form or some sort of – Malleable form, you could probably go down a chimney or through a crack and and something. But there's no like um, there's no cool skylights or ways to get in like there is always an assassin. And phase. Azul mentioned he can get us through stone walls. Are the walls stone? I missed that part. All Sorry. the walls seem to be stone. The um, the stone Abu. wall. The wall. Abu mentioned. Oh <laughs> uh, yes, the, the uh, <laughs> yeah the the outer walls that go to the courtyard appear stone. Although you could just fly right over or get over those, climb over those. Um, and so this is the other side you haven't really seen yet. It's just there's a door to the tower right here with a guard on it. Um, and then spreading out from all this map um, is obviously um, other buildings and ways to get here without being seen. There's, you know, nighttime, there'd be less traffic, but you could get pretty close, you think, um, at least within probably 30 feet, maybe, because um, you can fit, even though it looks like these are tight, you could probably squeeze through here even in some of these buildings that are adjacent to each other, or this is actually just a stone um, surface where I'm pinging down here on the left, on the west side. So you can actually come around there and climb over this little wall here. Um, so that's a way too. Um, so there's a lot of different angles. So you could basically just come in the waterway. You can come in the north, you know, the north, the south, or um, the, the probably the most open area is um, there's a little bit of a courtyard on the east here, where you saw that one big door to the tower. So that would probably have to cover the most ground, um, open ground. Um, but that's basically everything you get from your scouting. All right. That's super helpful. Unless there's something else you want. So I'm going to move you back to um, get rid of this token. I'll move you guys back to the camel because that's where we are now. And so, um, so you're doing that most of the day. So... 10 o'clock, um, when you come back, so uh, Drell and uh, so Drell, As, and um, Aurelius, I kind of know what you're doing in the morning. As and Drell, you're, are you back on your book, Drell? I am. Okay, so As, what are you doing? What am I doing? Um, I don't have much planned for the current time. Okay. I'm going to be waiting for the night. So, um, my goal is. I got to go back to the camel. Uh, here we go. Um, Aurelius, when you get back, uh, do you go right back from, from the uh, from the camel uh, from uh, in drizzles to the camel? And drizzles to the camel, yes. After you get, so you have your scroll. Um, you come up the stairs to your upper suite there, and you're heading to those first double of doors. Um, and oh. Well, um, you hear as you walk by um, the, in the hallway, you're just coming up the stairs that wrap around up to your level. And um, but there's a little um, you hear behind you. You didn't hear anybody moving. But as you're going up the stairs, you hear um, a dwarven voice. No. Um, uh, Aurelius. Um, there is a bit of a problem. Thought that you there might be something you need to know. 
What is it? And uh, you look around and it's be- Buford. it's uh Buford. Um, Buford. Buford. Um, Buford. And, and uh, he uh, he um he says probably best if we talk in, in inside. Just follow me up. Don't be seen if that's possible. Um, well, you didn't see him at all. You only heard him when I, he spoke. That was my ironic statement. Um, Buford, Buford, so he, he follows he follows you in until you get to the second chamber there, and he kind of starts talking to you. Oops, that's not him. He starts talking to you. Where's your guy? I'm not I'm not gonna bother putting the minister down for him right now, but I'm just gonna show you where you are. So you're in your you're in the uh, alpaca yeah. um uh entry uh, portion of your of the suite, and um he closes the door behind you and he says, uh the uh you asked me to be looking for the Arja. Yes. Um and uh he is downstairs right now. Um he has disguised himself uh using some sort of magic as a wealthy but playboy or something. And he is hanging out down at the street side uh, uh hookah bar cafe that was attached to this building. Um he seems to be kind of uh casing um your suite. Uh, I do not know exactly what he is looking for, but um, it does not look like he is um, in, in, in a nefarious state, but, uh, but he is definitely trying not to be seen while he observes you. Your information is incredibly well-timed. I will, uh, can you describe exactly what he looks like so I don't, shall we say, encounter the wrong individual? I can do this. Um, one more thing before we part ways. Um, just so you are aware, the Sultan now has two more spies observing you um, from a, uh, from around the area. One is a uh, exotic dancer, young lady, and the other is a is masquerading as a young nobleman that works the streets. Um, but uh, as far as um, as uh, Ajar is, he is looking like, right now, he is looking like, uh, so you, he, he would, should not be too hard to find. He has, uh, he's wearing a purple robes with gold trimming and lots of jewelry, although I do not think it's real. Um, he has a, Kind of a Van Dyke with um, slim beard, black, dark skinned. Um, his hair is black. His, his skin is, you know, the uh, the um, <clears throat> the tan skin of a of a um, one of the regular citizens. He has been in the sun. His longer hair um, with some thin braids around the sides and some gold trinkets in his braids. Um, very flamboyant looking. His clothes look of, of, of wealthy cloth. Um, I do not think it'll be hard to find. He's the only one dressed as such at the bar. He wears very many bracelets on his arms as well. I reach, I reach in my bag and pull out 50 gold. He goes, for the information, anything else would be but by equal amounts of money. He goes, oh, this is most, most this is excellent. I, um, it was, uh, I was thinking that, you know, I would be, Coming at the end of my payment in a few days, but this will take me for longer. I will stay in your services until this, until my you know this comes to an end. But I will keep on watch as we have talked about. Half of that is your tip; the other half is for the next five days. I will oh. and once again when that monkey runs out. I'll talk to you again, and we'll see if you can. I continue to employ you, but your messages are deeply received and appreciated. Very good, then. I will go back to work since I am so well paid. And he um, he smiles for the first. You've never seen him smile before. Um, and he smiles for the first time. And um, he actually reaches out to give you a warrior's kind of handshake, even though he's yeah. not technically a warrior. Class, but... And he, he grabs your hand and he reaches the other forearm and he says, you know, loyalty goes a long way. The dwarves. And uh, he releases your grasp and then as he starts to look he looks back over his shoulder and he kind of just looks at it and he goes the dwarves of the mountain not necessarily the dwarves of the underdog that is for free Did that comment he says that comment is for free and he leaves well, before and he's he an associate as a associate 
Yeah, exa- exactly. It says, if you need me, you know where you can find me. And I'm always here to help. He says, if you need me, and he smiles again and laughs, but you probably won't yeah. find me. <laughs> he, you see him disappear <laughs> as he closes the door. Takes a little thing. Um, so All right, so I'm going to share. Um, oh, well, I'll do that later. Um, so are your plans to go down there? Or are you going to hold back? Uh, I'm going to see who's in the room. And then I'm going to go. Uh, uh, so uh, we determined that um, Cal is out scouting. Scouting. Nam's out scouting. Um, Adrell is here, but he's busy doing book exercises and book reading. Right. And um, as Azrael is here, though. Okay. He's watching at this point. Azrael. As, I don't see it's uh, going to make you stronger. Azrael, we have located uh, Can't hurt. our spy. It's like watching the physical 100 here with all the Koreans exercising. Um, so, Ezrael, I, we've located our spy who's been who led us into that trap. Um, if you'd be interested in uh, accompanying me, we can uh, take a jar out. Do be aware we will probably be observed, but I would prefer Thank to you. I would prefer to take a, take a jar and get a little revenge on the fact he set us up with that decision. That, that actually, you came. You were there with the Jin. I never was there for the Jin. Well, he went back. Okay. So he doesn't betray He's a liar. You. He is he's fiendish. He has lied. He has betrayed us and he's attempted to get us killed at least twice. And when I say myself, I mean myself, Nam, and Cal. And we're chosen. You know, we have wronged you, and therefore he's wronged me. Uh, also, all right. So I have whole person. So are you guys going to head downstairs <laughs> to the charges on a mask? So as I go out there, I'm going to uh, I pull up my staff, my fire staff, and fire up uh, Fee. Fee, I might need a little muscle, and I'm going to upcast it. Uh, you know it's a public place, right? Uh, that I do. All right. Oh, I do. Because uh, walking around with, like, uh, Fay may not be looked kindly upon in the by anybody in the city, so. Uh, so you know. got a little bit of cash. Um, really? So if you're watching the fireball into the crowd. And, so, and, and, and the cafe is, so. is relatively crowded. At this time of day, so um, and depending who you remember, who affects factions. So um, just just keep that in the back of your mind, um, especially killing just innocent people. Um, but all right, so you guys go downstairs. Um, we're going to just do this visually. I don't have a map for this, um, but he is definitely available to do whatever you want. Why don't we? Why don't we hold this right here? And yeah, call for the night. It's nine. Okay. And mm-hmm. then we can pick up from here when we start. That sounds perfect, yeah. actually. So we'll start. Yeah, I didn't realize what time it was. Perfect timing. Good call. And, and that'll give um, me a little bit of time to think about what I'm going to do. Some, yeah, and also I got to, there's all kinds of like, me. yeah, there's all yeah. kinds of stuff that um, that people are doing behind the scenes. We'll catch up on all that stuff. Achievement unlocked! You've made it to the end of another D6 Generation episode, the podcast whose humor has universally been acclaimed as not too horrible. Please let us know what you thought of the show by emailing us at info at the D6 Generation.com. If for some inexplicable reason you actually enjoyed this show, You can help others find out about it by leaving positive reviews on iTunes. Thanks for listening and happy gaming.